Welcome back to Barrett Jackson. You're under the big top looking at the world famous Barrett Jackson auction stage occupied right now by lot 754, a 1954 Corvette 235 150 convertible. Well, they were still all six cylinders. Let's don't forget the uh, vaunted Chevy uh, Blue Flame 6 is what we'll find under the hood here. Dual Carter side draft carburetors and this one with a uh, power glide automatic transmission. That two speed automatic uh, did the job. Sorry, but the hood doesn't uh, doesn't come up. Polo white red interior. And this is the way they were. This has been restored to completely stock. Only thirty six hundred forty Corvettes rolled off the assembly line in nineteen fifty four. Optional radio. Note how the bumper here is actually one, two, three, four, five pieces plus the bumperettes uh, with a space for the exhaust pipe on both sides, even though this was an inline six and not a V engine. $58,000 at the hammer. Very cool part of Corvette history there. Now let's join Rick DeBrule with the men who make the wheels go round here at Barrett Jackson. And that would be company chairman and CEO Craig Jackson and president Steve Davis and you know we've already seen a great week so far before we even came on the air we saw great cars crossing the block what are you looking forward to today that's going to make it even better well you just saw that 54 Corvette go by that was just on the block we were walking the 10 earlier and an LS6 and a 69 Shelby GT500 uh, 69 435 horsepower 427 Corvette these are all Friday cars on Thursday Steve, what are you looking forward to? Well, again, Broncos are kind of the thing that I'm that I love. They're close to my heart. We're going to see an incredible come across later today with an amazing trader. Every shape, size, and configuration. These Broncos and Blazers, particularly, are some of the best ever assembled. It's going to be amazing, along with all the cool stuff. We saw two E-Birds, one car between each one sale earlier this morning. I mean, incredible cars this early in the week, and they're all selling. The, the, the gavel stops here. There's nothing else. But it's sold, sold, sold here. Yeah, we got a ton of cars crossing the block. You don't want to leave, right? You want to be here for every minute of this program. It's going to be great. About lot 800, it just takes a hockey stick. So don't go anywhere. All right. Once again, we look forward to that. You guys got to get back to work, we and do. we're going to get back to talk about the cars. Bob? All right. Thanks, Rick. We just had a sale of $70,000 for this beautiful Corvette Custom Coupe. Corvette's always popular here at Barrett Jackson. And every now and then something pops up like this morning's good humor truck that really raises the roof. Moving on to lot 755, it's a 1939 Mercury 99A sport convertible. Well, this is out of the Brian Frank collection, a second generation restorer from out of the Midwest. And note the uh, flathead Ford V8 with its single carburetor. Less than 8,000 of these were built in 1939. And 1939, a big year, the beginning of the Mercury line. Edsel Ford said, hey, let's introduce this thing. Let's take it into a different direction. That's exactly what they did. You know, the Mercury two-door was listed at just a little under $1,000 at that point in time. And the idea was to take the, the styling from the Lincoln Zephyr and put it into a more affordable package. And frankly, I think that's what they were able to achieve. Look at the long tail that goes out the back and then that sharp nose up front. Beautifully presented here. Gleaming new paint. And uh, Patrick Pograt, longtime restorer here from Phoenix, who did wonderful six figure cars here. I said, Patrick, why do you over, over restore your cars with brand new paint under the hood and outside and everything looking new and shiny? Because my customers like them that way. And that's the way a lot of these cars are presented here at Barrett Jackson in better than new restored condition. When you think about it, I mean, the people who are buying these cars are spending an awful lot of money. If they got it the way it actually looked, the way it came off the showroom floor, there were flaws. He didn't want to do that. $62,000 sells it, and those folks look pleased. As Mike mentioned, that car was from the Brian Frank collection. There's a number of consignments from that great collection of cars. Here's April Rose with more on them. Every year at Barrett Jackson, we have so many amazing collections, and that's the case this year with the Brian Frank collection, and there's just a few I had to show you. 
I love this 1967 Mercury Comet Capri R code. Now, this is one of six R codes built this year. It's got a 427, 425 horsepower with two four barrel carburetors all stuffed into this sleek body. It also has a full Marty report, so you know it's all correct. Now, how about something a little bigger? 1977 GMC Sierra 3500 Camper Special. Just beautifully done, full nut and bolt restoration. It's got its matching numbers, 454, custom built wheels, bright two-tone paint. I mean, if you're looking for a big truck, it doesn't get better than this. How about this? 1969 Buick GS400. Now, this is one of three in the special order Fire Glow Orange over Pearl White. It's powered by its matching numbers, 400 cubic inch V8, three-speed automatic, and it even comes with its original build sheet. And I have to show you this beauty, 1961 Corvette Restomod that's been painstakingly built with every detail to perfection. It's got an LT4 6.2 liter supercharged V8, eight-speed automatic transmission, Art Morrison chassis, and it's all topped off in a truly stunning Orion silver paint. When it comes to collections, no one comes close to the variety or quality you'll see here at Barrett Jackson. And I'm really looking forward to seeing these cars cross the block. Well, there you have it. That 1970 Chevelle Custom Coupe hammered away at $90,000 a moment ago. And that's our number six sale uh, of the day. Right now, this is lot 756, a 1966 Chevelle SS Custom. Well, this is a full-on resto mod. It is restored to look original on the outside, but under the hood is a modern fuel-injected LS1 V8 engine connected to a four-speed manual transmission. And to your point, how do we define resto mod? Well, it's kind of squishy. I mean, different people do it different ways, but the way I always call it is simply that it looks stock from the outside. Maybe the wheels have been changed, but for the most part, if it drove by you, you think, oh, that's a nice-looking stock 1966 Chevelle. It's what's been done underneath. Maybe new suspension, new engine. Look at the way they've redone this interior. So this is a full-on Restomod. Drives and looks better on the inside than when it was new. And there's a huge demand for these, especially at Barrett Jackson. You want a car that looks like the car you remember? You want a car that drives like one fresh out of the showroom? Yes, you can have it all. And here we are at $80,000 bid. And the great thing is there are so many great aftermarket parts available now. So many companies that make better suspensions, better chassis, better engines, crate engines. And so you can assemble the pieces and do a nice job and still have a great looking 1966 Chevelle. Now this one is said to be an SS. It was an original V8 car. And uh, all of the badging though has been removed. Yeah, according to the VIN, it is a 138 car, which is what it would have had to have been to be an SS. Yeah, you saw the bidder assistant wave off the auctioneer. His bidder was done. All that was left was a man willing to spend $80,000 plus the 10% buyer's premium and applicable taxes. Nice acquisition right there. Another break coming up. Clouds now building over Westworld of Scottsdale, but that won't stop the action at Barrett Jackson. Time to take a peek into the McGuire staging lanes where all of the cars come and line up in order for the final shine before they go across the hot lights of the Barrett Jackson stage. And on that stage right now, one of the biggest names in luxury. This is a 2008 Bentley Azure convertible. Well, Bob, these were $330,000 cars new, and then you would option them up to taste. And this one's only been enjoyed for less than 17,000 uh, actual miles. Beluga, which is a kind of caviar, is the name of this color. We could just call it black or tuxedo or nighttime, but I think Beluga has a nice luxury ring to it. It's funny, I was thinking whale, actually. <laughs> it's pretty big, but it's not as big as the old Bentleys used to be. And, you know, from a performance perspective, it was also significantly better. 450 horsepower coming out of that uh, 6.75 liter engine. 
So it's exactly what they wanted it to be coming. Remember, at this point, they had shifted away from being a Rolls-Royce clone, so the idea was to take some of the performance they had in the GTC line, the other Bentleys, and move it into a more luxurious package. Only 183 of these were built in 2008. This one looks to have been nicely preserved, well-loved, and again, uh, very low miles, under 17,000. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you think about this. Here we are in a car that is uh, 15, 16 years old and barely used. Now, a lot of people are concerned, once again, about what the repair costs are for these. And the question being, okay, if you've got the ability to find out what the co you know, what's been done to it in terms of maintenance, hopefully that'll improve it. But you also only have 16,000 miles. Assuming it hasn't just been sitting for the last 15 years, you should be pretty safe with it. I'm with you, Mike. I thought belugas were white whales, but maybe the caviar Mike mentioned is black. Now back to the casual part of our program. The car sells at $80,000. Congratulations, sir. Now let's join April Rose. I've been accused of falling in love with every car I see, but I just can't help it with this. Absolutely love 1970 Charger RT 440. Now she's hemi orange like the generally, but one year newer and no more split grill. Of course, the really cool hideaway headlights right up front there. Now this is the last year for this body and she's got all the right options. The RT is super track pack, the 440 six pack right there. And when you take a peek inside, I want you to check out, of course, you've probably seen it before but that is the sweet four speed pistol grip shifter just love those with the bucket seats and the tick tock tack i mean a muscle car of this caliber is definitely worthy of its beautiful rotisserie restoration yeah that's a beauty i'm a fan of big muscle cars and that's certainly a big muscle car thank you april back to the stage and a 2010 aston martin dbs volante well, more on color names. We would just call this pearl white, but no. Uh, Aston Martin calls it morning frost white, and it wears it very well. As for the interior, it's a very dark espresso brown, and the official name of it is bitter chocolate. This is a V12-powered car with just 20,000 actual miles on the clock. These are great performers, great high-speed touring cars. Uh, just just a, a thrill to drive. And I'd say 84,000 for that car was a decent buy. They are not for the impecunious. The Summit Racing sold sticker went on with the price for everyone to see when it goes back to its place in the showcase pavilions. And we move on to lot 759, a 2014 Mercedes-Benz SL63 AMG Roadster. Well, when the number after the SL has only two digits, that means it's an AMG modified car. Uh, this front apron is the part of the AMG styling package, but the big news is that supercharged V8. Yeah, the store, as the story goes, this car was developed uh, in connection with former Formula One driver David Coulthard. He was working with the factory, so they did some of the work in terms of trying to make it not just a great looking car, but a great performer as well. Triple black, folding hard top as on all SLs. And this one uh, has been treated to a carbon fiber, exposed carbon fiber, gloss painted rear spoiler. All black inside as well with carbon fiber trim. Yeah, this was the successor to the Mercedes-Benz SLR. And I love the fact that the way they put together, the way they've designed this up front, you know, and they did this with the SLR as well, but it's got the grill, which is the homage, the tribute to those original 300 SLs from the 1950s, which, by the way, we will see a 300 SL going sell here this week at Barrett-Jackson. $90,000 takes it away, and everybody's happy. <laughs> and now here's a car that's coming up a little bit later on. Lot 763 is a 1963 Chevy Nova SS Custom Convertible from legendary builder Mark Grimes. 454 crate engine, four speed and more. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auction. The sun is shining, but I am in the shade with this massive, massive beast right here. A 2008 Ford F650 custom pickup truck. They started with the 650 chassis, a big work truck, put the 350 normal civilian truck on top of it, and you have this well, amazing monstrosity. They did actually authorize these with Harley Davidson, Davidson officially licensed. So you can see the custom ghost flames and the Harley Davidson stickers all over it. But the coolest part is in the back. This is a toy hauler. So the bed actually folds completely flat, sort of like a dump truck. Ramps come out and you can load up a smart, smart car or some other small vehicle inside, then pull it back up and head on the road. And that's what somebody did with this. It has 130,000 miles on the 550 horsepower Cummins diesel. What a beast. No question about that. Wow, what a monster. Here's what the last three vehicles to cross the Barrett Jackson auction block did here in Westworld of Scottsdale. And this is lot 761, a 2021 Camaro ZL1 convertible. Well, the ZL1 is the super performance version, and here is proof the cars don't have to be old to be collectible. The last Camaro has already rolled off the production line. There will be no more, at least not with internal combustion engines. And there were various special editions with increased performance along the way. Here's one of them. Yeah, Chevrolet has said the name Camaro is not likely going away. We're going to see it come back. The question is, what's it going to be on? Is it going to be on an SUV? Is it going to be on something else? Hard to say. But, you know, it's interesting to look at it in terms of that first Camaro that coming out in 1967, getting through that first era up to 2002, disappearing for almost a decade and coming back in 2010, and now taking a little vacation again. And by the way, we've got a great 69 right behind this one. Wow, 79,000. Those are the happy new owners. They'll sign for their new acquisition and take it wherever they want. If you're curious about everything that happens at a Barrett-Jackson auction, including registering to bid, how you bid, there are four ways to do it, incidentally. Any kind of question, go to barrett-jackson.com and you'll find all of the answers. That's barrett-jackson.com. And while we're on the Camaro topic, here's lot 761.1, a 1969 RSSS custom convertible. Well, that means it has the SS performance package, but it has the RS appearance package with hideaway headlights. That was available on any Camaro, even the base Camaro. So this would have had SS badging because SS trumps RS, but all the badging's been removed. A nice triple, well, not quite triple black, dark gray metallic car. I'll tell you, there's not much not to like about this. Great looking car on pretty much every level. It's got a modern engine in there, big six liter engine. V8, it's got a six speed manual transmission. They've improved the stopping power all the way around. They got disc brakes everywhere. They've done, you know, tubular A arm in the front suspension, updated Ford Link in the rear. Once again, Resto Mod looks stock from the outside. But so much better performance. Wow, $80,000 sold. It rolls away, and so do we, but not for very long. We'll be back with more in our first hour here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Stay with us. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson at Westworld of Scottsdale. Here's a car we showed you earlier. Lot 763 is a 1963 Chevy Nova SS custom convertible. Well, the Chevy 2 was rushed to market as an economy car for people that didn't buy into the idea of the rear-engine air-cooled Corvair. And, of course, it had all trim levels, Nova being the top, SS being the top po power, and it came in a drop top as well. Oh, but this one goes there and beyond. Uh, they've got to put a big 454 cubic inch engine under this, customized. Love this color. I'm not even sure what to call it. Kind of wild yellow. It's a Corvette yellow. It's a, a Corvette, Corvette yellow. So all right. All in the family. Yep. You, know, you think about it, it's the second year. This was an economy car. This was probably born into a sedate family. Somebody wanted something to save some money on. Now it's a beast. $38,000. Wow. I think that's a really good buy. 
And I'd love to know how Corvette felt about them co-opting their color. Anyway, off it goes. Now our next vehicle, Black 763.1, it's too big to get into the room, frankly, and that happens from time to time at Barrett-Jackson. Tyler showed it to us earlier. It's a 2008 Ford F650 Custom Super Truck. Well, too big for the block, absolutely. You know, you have your uh, your light-duty pickups up to the 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, then your medium-duty pickups up to the 650, just with a whole lot of increased carrying and mostly towing capacity uh, anything bigger would be a you know would be a freight liner or an international and in fact navistar makes the medium duty trucks for chevrolet they just pop a chevy cab on top of them so if this looks like an overgrown oversized right in your face pickup well there's good reason for that yeah it looks like somebody took a pickup truck put an air hose in it and just started pumping it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and the next thing you know, you've got something that's a uh, F650. This particular one is a Harley Davidson edition. It's got fun graphics. It's got that big 6.7 liter Cummins six cylinder diesel engine. Now, normally you think 550 horsepower is a lot, but 550 horsepower in this thing just, well, it barely does the job. But you have to think about towing capacity, what you can do. This is an amazing thing. You roll down the street, you're definitely gonna get attention. Big wheel cutouts allow a much sharper turning radius on these medium duties than on the lighter duty trucks. And it's got an air suspension that can lower this all the way to the ground, which probably helps getting in and out. Which they may have to do for our sold sticker girl to put the uh, Summit Racing sticker up there on the windshield. Her name is Devon, guys. French. Sometimes this job is big fun. So, a steroid scourge hit that truck, but it sells $40,000, and we will move on as soon as they back it out of the room. Now on stage, lot 764 is a 1964 Corvette custom drop top. Well, you know, one of the things that everybody I knew did that had a mid-year Corvette, a 63 to 66 in later years, was find out if any 67 big block Corvettes ended up in the junkyard because everybody wanted a Stinger hood for their earlier Stingray. And that's what we see here in the contrasting color of silver over this midnight blue exterior. Small block Chevrolet uh, with a very big aftermarket carburetor, dual plane manifold, exhaust headers. Yeah, it's been upgraded. It's got power steering. It's been redone inside with better bucket seats. They've just taken this up to the next level. And I'm not going to say take it up to the maximum level. We'll see some that will cross the block over the course of the next couple of days that are truly not just pieces of art, but impressive performance machines. Best still, thing I see here, Rick, is the upgrade to disc brakes, which Corvette did not have until 1965 from the factory. $67,000 takes it just as the weather around the country is starting to improve so you can enjoy a drop top like that. And now let's have a look at a car that April showed us earlier. It's lot 764.1 65 Chevy Corvette 327 350. Well, another mid-year or Stingray Corvette, but this one in the coupe body style, as most of them were. The split window was gone after 1963, but this, being a five, would have disc brakes right from the factory. 350 horse was the upgrade engine. 300 was standard. Yeah, in fact, 300 horsepower would be the base engine all the way up, I think, until 1971 when it would start to dip. And then for a long time, the base engine, well, in fact, was less than 200. So we, while we think of the 300 as, you know, the entry level for this year, and this has a 350, and for, there's a time just a decade later where we're going to be excited about 300 horsepower. You paid an extra $107.60 for the upgraded engine. Total MSRP, $5,423, a mere fraction of what it brings today. Yeah, that number would be $73,000. Congratulations to the new owners. Another break coming up, but stick around. We're approaching the end of our first hour of six here on FYI at Barrett-Jackson Scottsdale.
Back at Scottsdale, Arizona, Barrett Jackson and something wicked this way comes. How about this monster? <laughs> Takes me back to my tractor pulling days. Wow. Can't wait to see that on the stage. Meanwhile, there's action on the block. Lot 766 is a 1966 Chevelle SS396 convertible. Yeah, the big block midsize for Chevrolet, uh, resplendent in its original color to repaint lemon wood yellow. How nice they decided not to redo this in, say, red or black. Where is it well? Yeah, the VIN on this starts with 138, so likely a real SS car. I love the fact that they've simply brought it back to where it began. You know, a lot of uh, SSs were built that particular year, about 380,000 of them, but you know, not nearly as many got the SS package and that big 396 cubic inch block up front. This competed in the showroom against the Pontiac GTO. $92,000. Congratulations, sir. And everybody wants to high five the guy with the cool car. All part of the fun here at Barrett Jackson. And out she rolls. Coming to center stage, lot 766.1, a car that April Rose showed us earlier, 1970 Dodge Charger RT 440. Well, and the biggest, baddest thing about this 440 is what they call the six pack, which is a great name for the six intake throats in the manifold for the three two barrel carburetors. Yes, it was really thirsty, but it was really powerful too. Yeah, and this is the track pack. I mean, this was pretty much the ultimate Dodge Charger short of a Hemi, and I love the the way they have the little faux scoop here on the side, the air exit with the little inset RT. That's the way it was actually done back in 1970. And this one, boy, it just looks great. We'll call this Hemi Orange. I love it. Well, that's what uh, that's what Dodge called it, was Hemi Orange. Uh, the exterior color pretty much matching the color that they put on the engine blocks. Why did they paint engines? So they wouldn't rust to help preserve them. It wasn't an appearance thing. 88 grand for this big 440. Oh, and it really sucks the gas with that 410 rear end. That means at 70 miles an hour, you're way over 3,000 RPM on the highway. Yeah, we were just a couple years away from the big gas crunch at this point. You didn't really care. Nineteen seventy was the peak of the muscle car era. Gas was thirty seven cents a gallon. The insurance companies had not yet surcharged these cars. It was a great time to have a big block Mopar. I thought it was going to a hundred grand, but it stopped at a mere ninety five. Really cool car. And speaking of Dodges, if you'd like to test your collector car knowledge and maybe pick up a great prize, you'll want to play Fantasy Bid, brought to you by Dodge. Go to promo.barrettjacksonfantasybid.com to register and play. You'll try to predict the winning bid of select auction vehicles that'll cross the block on Saturday, January 27th. The winner at the end of all of the 2024 Barrett Jackson auctions will win the grand prize, a spanking new 2024 Dodge Hornet. And if you're really on top of your game this week and could predict the exact final bid of all 12 fantasy bid vehicles, you could win $100,000. It's the perfect 12 jackpot. So make sure that you register to play. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 18 or over. Visit promo.barrettjacksonfantasybid.com for the official rules. Now back to the block. Lot 767 is a 67 Corvette 327 300 convertible. How about those side pipes? Yes, they were factory optional on the Corvette in 1967. Last year for the Stingray body style. And this one, a beautiful red on red four speed with those turbine wheels. I think it was only like a hundred and thirty dollar option. It wasn't really wasn't that expensive, although once again, hundred and thirty dollars, then a little bit more than what we think of today. You know, 1967 was so interesting because a lot of people didn't want to buy these. They were waiting for the 1968 Corvette that was going to come out. We knew it was going to be new and spectacular, the Maker Show Mako Shark body style. So the sales in 67, not as strong. Seventy-three thousand dollars takes it. Congratulations to that gentleman. And now let's go to April. 
these first generation Broncos have really exploded. The value just keeps going up and I love to see what builders do with them. Now this is a 1976 custom and the body style is called a half cab which you really don't see a lot of. It's just a really neat look. Now take a look in the back. You see it's been cut to fit the 33 inch tires and they added fender flares which is pretty common for wheel clearance. Another thing they made bigger was the engine. It's got a 302 stroked out to 347 cubic inches with upgraded aluminum heads and fuel injection. And go ahead, take a look inside now because these leather seats look so comfortable with that big bolstering to keep you steady when you go off road. It's got a full roll cage and a really pretty clean white painted dash, black padded up top center locking console. I mean, this would be so fun to take across the Arizona desert, Bob. All right, thanks, April. And this just in, $100,000 is the lead bid on this 71 Ford Mustang Boss 351. Well, a 1970 Chevy caught Ford napping. They've lifted their Z28 to 350 inches. Ford followed in 71 with the Boss 351. This is a four-speed car, beautiful car, but for the eight-track player, Richard and Karen Carpenter in the eight-track, come on, that's not muscle car stuff. Oh, you want vanilla fudge doing Inagata de Vida or whatever. Anyway, that winning bidder was up in the sky boxes. So no matter where you sit in this massive arena, your bid will be recognized. Rolling All right. on. All right. I mean, Karen Carpenter did play the drums as well as sing, but come on. <laughs> 768 is a 1968 Plymouth Hemi GTX. You wanted some headbanging music. You wanted something that would throb a little I bit I want to put my foot down, yes. <laughs> All right, GTX up on the block right now. What's really cool about this, this is a real deal. 1968 Plymouth Hemi. It's been certified by Galen Govier. It's got a four-speed manual transmission. Yeah, it's got that AM radio. No eight-track in there. We don't really care. Whatever was coming over KHJ AM in Los Angeles is exactly what you were listening to when this was rolling down the street. That was the monster motor right there. It cost over $1,000 as an option. It got a whopping 10 miles to the gallon, and nobody cared. This was what you wanted. Now, the GTX was the luxury version of Plymouth's B-Body, the base, of course, the Roadrunner, then the Velvet. Here, but uh, this was the sharp one. And it's a reminder we're missing our good friend Steve Mignante, who normally would be up and down, inside and out, looking and crawling all over this thing. He's uh, been dealing with some medical issues. He's on the road to recovery. Steve, we're missing you. We look forward to the day when you're hopefully back up here on the block, helping us all the insight into how that Hemi was created. You saw that little tiny Hemi emblem in the trunk, and there are a couple of more there on the faux hood vents. So if you're running the stoplight Grand Prix on whatever straightaway you favor in your hometown, you got to look real carefully to know it's a Hemi until it blows your doors off. And we see a lot of Hemi recreations, clones, whatever it may be. You know, you can buy the, the engines in an aftermarket world. But to see one that's original like this in a GTX body, I think is pretty special, especially with a four speed. And so is the color. We just call it B5 blue. It's had very different names over the years. The code color code is EB5. And to me, it's the most striking color they ever put on these 1968 to 70 era Mopars. $77,000. Well done, sir. Well, you'll be giving rides to all the girls. <laughs> and that's his reward. Oh, boy. Here we go. Lot 768.1 is a 1960 Imperial Crown Convertible. Well, Imperial was its own brand in 1960. It was not part of the Chrysler brand and it was intended to be the epitome of luxury and the crown logos are i mean they abound on the exterior and interior uh, of this car 
there were actually three model lines within the Imperial world. You could get the custom, the crown, or the top of the line LeBaron. So this was actually the mid-range. Now, remember, this is 1960. By now, they're starting to calm down in the tail fin world, but only slightly. Look at the fins that we see on the back of this with those big, bold tail lights with the surrounds that make it look like, I don't know, Saturn with the rings. And, of course, the faux Continental kit on the back of the trunk. Come up to the dashboard and get a look at the dash vents, uh, the way they poke out above the dashboard. Now, those could be aftermarket. What is this thing, an ocean liner? I mean, it's as long as one. And there's the shifter. It's typewriter drive, push-button drive, with matching controls for the climate control on the other side of the wheel. Love the shape of that wheel. And away it goes for $56,000. I don't know, you may spend that much just keeping the chrome shining from year to year. Uh, really dig those Boulevard cruisers. And here's a card that's coming up shortly. It's a 1957 Chevy Cameo custom pickup. We saw one of these yesterday. Got another one coming after the break. Stay with us. Engineering wonders await here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Right now, this beautiful Chevelle SS Custom from 1970. The top goes down, so the price goes up, and it hammered away at $100,000. That makes the top seven sales of the day all above $100,000. And it takes more than the century mark to break the overall top 10 of the auction. So the momentum is building. Lot 770.1, 1966 Dodge Coronet 500 convertible. Oh, but you missed the most important word in all that. A Hemi engine underneath the hood, 426 cubic inches, 425 horsepower. It's got dual inline, four barrel Carter carburetors. This is all about performance. It was all about having a NASCAR engine, actually, but you had to stick it in some other cars, and that's exactly what they did, put it in a Coronet. I think the bigger number here than 426 is 12. That's how many of these Hemi Coronet convertibles were built for 1966. And again, the Hemi engine option was nearly $1,000 all by itself. So it did not have a lot of takers. A lot of these were two-door sedans headed for the drag strip. And that's why only 12 convertibles. Yeah, this one's been certified by Dave Weiss. He's gone through, guaranteed that it is, it is what it's supposed to be, and that's exactly what you want. You want, there are experts out there, you know, whether it's Dave Weiss or Jerry McNish, some of these other people. Craig Jackson just walked by me and said, are you looking at this thing? It's only, only one of 12. And it's the only one that was painted silver at the factory, and it's a four-speed car. No torque flight automatic here. Yeah, the Coronet name had disappeared for a few years. It came back in the mid-60s, I think 1965, and this is the second year that the Coronet came back, but quite frankly, it doesn't really matter what's on the outside. What matters is on the inside. It's a great combination. Great looks, you know, everybody knows when the top goes down, the price goes up, and look where we ended up. A duplication all over again. $100,000 for that Dodge Coronet 500 convertible, and let's go to Tyler now. Lot 783.1, a 2023 Chevy Corvette Stingray. And with the Blueprint engine cam, let's come on in and take a look under the hood of this beautiful Stingray. Of course, the mid-engine Corvette here. So the engine's not in the front. It is actually in the back. 6.2 liter V8, 495 horsepower. And this is very mid-engine. We have a trunk here for all of your luggage. And then in front, of the rear wheels is the eighth generation Corvette's engine placement, 495 horsepower. This one well optioned. You can see it has the magnetic ride control from these wires coming here. Z51 performance package. Total sticker on this one, $92,740. And it's just amazing to think how far the Corvette has come in 70 years. 1953, we have one of those selling. Here's 2023. 
I guess we shouldn't be surprised to see the latest in Corvettes here at Barrett Jackson. Lot 771 is his 1971 Plymouth GTX, Mike. Well, the GTX got completely restyled for 1971. This one has a 440 with a torque flight automatic and the air grabber hood, rare on this car. You'd see it a lot on the Roadrunners, the budget supercar, not so much on the beautiful GTX. And the color, don't call it plum crazy. Plymouth's name for this color was inviolent. Put those two words together and you'll get the meaning. <laughs> Pretty sharp. I have to say, I've always loved this particular design in the Chrysler world. They call this the fuselage style. 59,000 takes it. That's a bit of a good buy, I think. I hope that gentleman thinks so. Now, here's a little program reminder. Be sure to watch SEMA Battle of the Builders 2023. It's on the History Channel this Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And then stand by your TV because we'll be on the air on FYI at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And then History Channel from 6 p.m. to midnight. Now on the block, a 2023 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body Jailbreak. So what do they mean when they call it a jailbreak? Well, it's kind of a, a, an allusion to phones. You know, the, they take phones, they jailbreak them, and then you can customize them however you want. That's exactly what Dodge allowed with this. The idea was to say, okay, we're going to let you take that, that special car, one of our last editions, either a Challenger or a Charger, and we're going to let you customize it exactly the way you want it. That's exactly what they've done here. You know, it's got a 6.2-liter supercharged engine underneath that hood pumping out 807 horsepower. It's got $25,000 in hand-picked options. Once again, this is essentially like the old days when you could pick the options you were going to put on as opposed to buying packages. MSRP on this car was $97,000. We've already exceeded that by uh, 13 because after this, there are no more. And I think this one only has 17 miles on the odometer. $110,000. That makes it the number four sale of the day and tied for number six of the entire auction. So the drum beat continues. Sheer muscle. Very cool car. Okay, how about something in a Bronco, a 1976 custom SUV? So many first generation Broncos at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Uh, this year, this is the first one on our air. The 302 cubic inch V8 engine has been stroked to 347 with Wiseco pistons, a cop cam, and Edelbrock aluminum heads, and a Holly Sniper electronic fuel injection system. So, way more power than this one was born with, and an AOD automatic transmission. Well, we see what it looks like up above. Let's take a moment and see what it looks like down below. As you can see, it's got that 302 cubic inch engine that he was talking about. It's got uh, fuel injection. It's got an automatic transmission. And once again, we talk about the fact that these have such short wheelbases. Not a lot to see when it goes over, but it all looks very nice. Now, not all the early Broncos got SUV style bodies. You could get a 66 Bronco when they first came out with no top with a pickup style removable roof like this and a pickup bed or a full length SUV bed which ended up being the one body style uh, that survived in production through the rest of this vehicle's uh, life cycle. So five or six years ago you could get donor Broncos for three or four thousand dollars. These days you're lucky if you're paying less than 20 for an original Bronco that you're going to rebuild. Well, earlier, April Rose told us about that car and how much she loved it. Looks like somebody else did, too, to the tune of $100,000. That information, along with so much more, will be coming your way at Barrett-Jackson.com. Check it out. Pictures, all sorts of videos and words about Barrett Jackson and the world's greatest collector car auctions. Barrett-Jackson.com. Now on stage, lot 772.1, a 72 Chevy Monte Carlo Custom. 
The Monte Carlo debuted for 1970 as Chevrolet's per first attempt at a personal luxury car, a two-door two-plus-two. This one has been treated to an LS swap, a Corvette LS3, the modern version of the 350 cubic inch small block engine. Nice resto mod. Yeah, now it's pumping out 525 horsepower. It's actually built not far from here in Glendale. And, you know, they, the Monte Carlo body came out in 1970. So you're really looking at the third model year. And I think it lasted up to well, 89 or so when the Lumina replaced it. But there was a time when the Monte Carlo was kind of great street luxury and doing very well in the NASCAR world as well. Final year for this body style, 1973 would see a whole new shape. But again, was successful on racetracks as well as in the showroom. A lot of these got vinyl tops. In fact, I think it's kind of rare to see one without that. All just part of the personal luxury car theme that Chevrolet was going for with the money. Yeah, and as we point out, this is a custom, so it's very possible it was born with a vinyl top. And somebody said, you know what? Vinyl tops aren't quite as popular as they were once upon a time. And now it's gone. That was a battle of the bitters for sure. You can tell by the fist pump that that fella is glad he got it done at $70,000. Another break coming up, and we'll be back to the Valley of the Sun. So much more. Barrett Jackson coming your way now in our second hour on the air here on F1I. FYI. So join us in a moment. Welcome back on a beautiful afternoon in Scottsdale, Arizona. Look at that line of beauties lining up to pass through the staging lanes and into the big top, the main auction hall. Across the world famous Barrett Jackson auction block. Currently occupied by lot 774, a 94 Chevy Silverado 1500 pickup. Well, it's a cool pickup, but what's really cool about it is it only has 2,100 original miles, according to the consigner. You, you just wonder how it happens over and over again where these cars come to auction and they have so few miles on it. Well, this one was sold new in Alcoa, Tennessee at uh, West Chevrolet. Window sticker shows it loaded with options. This was a $23,000 truck back in 1994 with its 5.7 liter V8 automatic transmission, 16-inch uh, wheels, 373 posi rear axle, and uh, well, there's even a, even an old newspaper back from when this truck was new. It looks just new in the wrapper. Beautiful. Yeah, the color is teal green. I was just looking back here at the tow hitch at the very back, and it doesn't look like there's ever even been a tow hitch attached to this. So it is practically the way it came off the showroom floor. I think with 2,000 miles on it, it's going to be hard-pressed to find something that's, that's in newer condition from 1994 in terms of a 4x4 pickup truck. Now, $52,000 takes it home. Now, here is a vehicle that we talked about going to break a short while back lot 774.1 was a 1957 Chevy Cameo custom pickup. Now this truck could have been born with a V8 but it would not have been a 502 cubic inch a big block like we have under here the Cameo V8 with its passenger car style styling and fiberglass add on fenders was quite a showstopper when new. As the story goes, a gentleman who worked for GM back then by the name of Chuck Jordan said, you know, why do all trucks have to look the same with that step sign? I think we can do better. This is what he came up with. Chuck Jordan went on to become the chief stylist of General Motors. Look at that rear bumper. It's very similar to what is on the Nomad two-door hardtop wagon. And wow, six figures and then some, Bob. I believe that's the second winning bid for that couple. Okay, one for him, one for her. Let's see where they go from here, strategy-wise. One hundred thousand dollars plus. Okay, now here comes one of my favorites, Cadillac, 1955 Series 62 convertible. Well, Cadillac was the standard of the world. And boy, they just love to portray it with all of the badging and jewelry uh, that adorned all the cars. These big, huge Dagmar uh, bumper guards. No question, 
that it was a Cadillac coming. The Fins, which began in 1948 under the direction of Harley Earl, all the gleaming stainless, the faux scoops, the two tone interior. This is just amazingly gorgeous. And what's really amazing is how long it is. I mean, this is probably 225 inches or so, and it's just a two door. You know, they made about 8,000 of these in 1955. I mean, this was not an inexpensive car in its day, but it was designed to be pretty much the ultimate in personal luxury. So I want to call your attention to the Cadillac Crest, which is still in use on new Cadillacs, but boy, it's been modernized a lot over the years. Uh, sometime ago, it lost its Corona. And see those little footless ducks? In heraldry, they're called merlettes. And I don't understand why they're no longer part of the Cadillac Crest. I want to bring back the merlettes, please. Well, in a way, they have, because that is the inspiration for the new Blackwing. The name Blackwing, let's bring it back from the birds that were in the original Cadillac Crest. I'll buy that. Now for the first time, we see the staff working the television bidders. And I think that was the winning bid at 77,000 on the Summit Racing Sold sticker. And away it goes to its new home. Now, while we're talking luxury, how about something a little more recent? This is a 2015 Bentley Flying Spur. Well, in some ways, you could almost say that the Flying Spur was the entry-level Bentley for four-door sedans. Not as big or luxurious as the Mulsanne, but it still had a lot of the features. You know, it had two engine choices. You could either get that four-liter V8 or the six-liter W12. Don't call it a V12. Let's call it a W12. Well, you got to wonder with the internal combustion engines maybe on the wane, although I think right now there's a preference for hybrids over full electric cars, but let's not debate that. Does anybody really need a 12-cylinder engine? Smoothness. The more cylinders, the smoother the delivery of power, and that's why these 12 cylinders had a home in uh, a variety of luxury cars, not just Bentleys. 500 horsepower, enough to get up and get around. So once again, not a light car, but not in terms of the, the weight that the old ones would have had. And look at this. I mean, in terms of value, we're at, it's currently bid at $50,000 for a car that's from 2015. And unless I'm mistaken, I think the mileage on this one is pretty low. Let's see what it says. Yeah, it's got less than 18,000 miles on the odometer. $50,000 takes it. The bidder assistant says, hey, Give these folks a round of applause. Why not? That was a great buy. Wow. So let's move on. <laughs> we saw oh, this must vehicle. Be. Oh, my God. Look out, guys. Watch your toes. A 2005 Chevy Silverado way custom pickup. I'm speechless. You know, this just, it just de defies description. How do you explain to anybody what this truck is? Well, as the story goes, it started off as simply just another custom build. But as they were building it, slowly but surely, they decided they wanted to make it a tribute truck. And you see under here the tribute, right? It says heroes on the front. There you see the eagles. Now, let's move around to the side. And what heroes are we talking about? Well, of course, our military heroes. On the other side, we've got the Air Force. On this side, we've got the Army. And take a look at the interior of this. They didn't stop airbrushing any place, every place. The seats, the back, airbrush all over the place. In fact, let's work our way towards the back because you can see we've got former presidents, John F. Kennedy right there. We've got the American flag. Now, check out that rear suspension, beautifully chrome. You can right. see the air tanks right there. Take back up front, please, because never have I ever seen a vehicle come to the Barrett Jackson auction block and do this. The entire body is lifted on hydraulic struts to expose the belt-driven supercharger on this 540 cubic inch big block. I, again, I'm still speechless. I Good tell you, I, the bidders are not, because look at the number, what, $138,000. They say they spent 1,200 hours alone just on the airbrushing. 
$140,000. That's our number two sale of the day and the auction. And what a visual feast it is. 50,000 man hours worth of assembly and then all of that paintwork that Rick just described. And everything that isn't painted is chrome. Now, while we're on the subject of trucks, we'll go from gas to diesel. Lot 776.1 will not make the stage. It's a 2000 Kenworth T2000 semi truck. A semi truck and trailer. I mean, look at that thing. And look at the work that's been done. I'm not quite sure what the theme is. I mean, you've got that lady, the nymph on the hood. And then as you go back over the cab, you can see they've kind of done like, I don't know, is it a stegosaurus chasing, chasing the nymph? Hard to say. but. Boy, the airbrush work alone on this, they say they spent 3,800 hours between the body prep, the airbrush, the clear coating, and the buffing, all to get it to look just like this. Well, you don't take that down to your local Blue Beacon and have them acid wash it. No, that's, that is just gorgeous. It's just way, way over the top. I feel like I'm in Vegas, Bob, where too much is never enough. The truck that just crossed the block and this beautiful Kenworth semi. I, I, semi, I went out back and looked at this uh, yesterday, and just the artwork alone pretty much defies description. Well, let's pull our money, buy it, and let's head for Daytona Beach and catch the end of the Rolex 24. Yeah, that is pretty much the perfect party truck, isn't it? Uh, you park that on, you know, inside a Sebring. I think you can have a lot of fun. And I love the fact that, you know, we so, we're so used to talking about 10 speed automatic transmissions now as being so smooth. This thing has an 18 speed automatic transmission because, you know, it's a big, huge truck. This is what they do. Well, Got to haul all that weight. Who doesn't love a truck, especially something like this? Wow. I always go back to what was the inspiration? What were they thinking when they went, you know, I'm going to put a little stegosaurus, you know, on the back of the, the cab. We're going to have some dyno work that goes along. Amazing. $90,000. My goodness. And that couple struck again. Wow. Another break in our future. And we'll be back with more of the world's greatest collector car auction. Welcome back to Scottsdale, Arizona, to Westworld of Scottsdale. Normally an equestrian facility for barrel racing, all sorts of rodeo sports, that kind of thing. For one week each year, and now two weeks, considering Barrett Jackson will be back here in the fall for, well, call it Westworld 2. Barrett Jackson Auctions. We are loving every minute of it. We hope you are too. Here's what the last three cars brought when they crossed the block. Currently occupied by a 1978 Ford Bronco Custom SUV. Deluxe Marty report with this one showing how it was born and a big long four paragraph description about everything that's been changed. Starting with all of that diamond stitched uh, interior. Seating for five in the full size Bronco. Here's 57,000 takes it. It was up there for a bit. Right now we're going out to April Rose. Hey, Bob, I'm with this 1966 VW double cab transporter. Now, you see a lot of double cabs now, but back in the 60s, this was very unusual. Of course, you have the iconic VW right up front for all those bugs to smash into and the two-tone paint fog lights down here. And I really like the look of these headlight covers and didn't have air conditioning, but that's your air conditioning right there. These windows pop out, sliding windows on the side. And of course, everyone needs this little hula girl right here to top it off. Now take a look at that truck bed. Both of the sides fold down for easy loading and unloading. And these vents right here, they let the air in to cool. It's upgraded 2200 stroke flat four cylinder engine. It's just really nice to see one of these restored. Of course, you got a covered wagon style top luggage rack up there too. This would be so fun to drive, but I'd be nervous to drive it around because there's so few of them left, Bob. 
I was just thinking the same thing, April. Who's going to get on that when the bidding starts? I think it's a very cool vehicle. Let's see what number it goes for. And the number this Dodge Charger Custom Coupe went for was $97,000. Out the door it goes into the sunshine. And here comes a 1969 Camaro Custom. And let's call this a Restomont. Looks pretty darn stock from the outside. Underneath, however, they've made a lot of changes. Let's give Cliff to lift up the hood here. We can see the very modern uh, LS3 Gen 5 V8 engine. And when I say modern, I mean very modern looking. It's interesting because we just had a Charger go across the block. They put a modern Hemi in there, but they kind of dressed it up old style. Whereas here, we've got the full plenum on the top, making it look much more modern. Six-speed automatic backing up uh, that engine. Of rotisserie restoration where the whole body is put written on, put on a spit so you can work on the bottom as easily as you can work on the top uh, or the sides now this was an original California black plate car built in Van Nuys California not Norwood Ohio and always spent its entire life in California I mentioned earlier this week when I was a kid uh, growing up in Los Angeles one of the things we did was went on a field trip to the Van Nuys Fisher body plant and every time I see one of these roll across the block I'm like did I see that one get built that day did I see that one get built that day Le Mans blue is the color white interior buckets with headrests replacement gauges a little bit of modernization going on here and I like the fact that the consigner points out that it's got almost 3,000 miles that have been put on it since it was built. It's well run in. It's going to work properly. And $90,000. Just earned that, gentlemen. Very cool Camaro to go with a pretty darn cool tropical shirt, I must say. Now let's peek into the staging lanes and look at the crowd outside. The walls of the staging lanes. Look, it looks like a parade route as these cars come down into the lanes, waiting for their turn to enter the building and cross the block. What a crowd. They expect about 500,000 people during the course of the week. Huge number here already today. And we still have Friday and Saturday to come. Well, to the matter at hand, a 1959 Ford F-100 custom pickup. Well, they never came from Grabber Blue, not back in the... Uh... 1950s you'd have to go another 10 years before that color made its debut but that theme is carried through to the interior carried through to the bed everything here is blue or white or doesn't matter well I love what they've done with this a minimal chrome I mean you know they got door handles a few other things but no bumpers none of that stuff and I love that's what Steve Magnante would call the art of the exhaust look how they've cupped it in there and designed it so it goes into where a bumper would be go into the bed you can see they've raised it you can see with the uh, fender wells are slightly tub because it could probably get some big tires underneath uh, there is a lot of work and detail that went into this and that that blue and white were so crisp together check out these wheels never seen anything like those uh, the steel rims with formed steel centers uh, no vents no slots just very very simple yeah and hiding behind them four wheel disc brakes front and rear 55 grand takes it away and let's take a look now at a car that will be coming up soon. Wow, where do you start with a 2007 Shelby GT500 Super Snake Convertible? It's got the supercharged 5.4 liter engine, all of the goodies. We'll see it a little later on. At Westworld of Scottsdale in the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction, there is proof positive that we have many, many beautiful cars and trucks still to cross the Barrett Jackson auction block. In our five days of coverage here on FYI and History Channel. Here's a car that Tyler Hoover showed us earlier. Lot 781 is a 71 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom. And there it goes at 100 large. Wow, that's commitment. Tyler thought it was worth it. 
And that gentleman agrees. Nice interior. Okay, how about something in an interesting shade of green? This is a 1971 Mustang Boss 351. Well, Bob, this was a time when manufacturers developed safety colors, cars that were extra visible. They thought that would cut down on crashes. Uh, Chrysler, high impact colors. AMC had the big bad colors. In Ford, they were grabber colors, as in grab your attention. This is grabber lime on this Boss 351. And as we said, they had to raise the size of the engine in their Boss cars to keep up with Chevy's Z28s. Well, and effectively, the 351, the Boss 351, replaced both the Boss 302 and the Boss 9 from just a couple of years earlier. So this was the the performance version, and it's interesting. I think they made just over 1,800 of these. And here on the auction block today, we've seen two go across the block. We saw the blue one a little bit earlier, now grab her line. These were not a huge sales success. I think they won one Trans Am race with this body style. Uh, Warren Tope won one, son of a, a Ford VP. But the flat back body style, the interior on these is fairly cramped. And well, you know what came next was the downsized Mustang too. Well, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger up until 1973. And I think a lot of the people who appreciated the early years of the Mustang just thought it was a little too much. And once again, they were already gearing up, as you mentioned, for the Mustang II that was gonna come along in 1974. Now the back seat folds down, so there is a huge cargo area where the back seat would be, but it does not connect to the trunk. The trunk is separate, and this is not a hatchback. I think this would have been a much more useful and higher selling car if it had been. You heard the hammer. $72,000 for that Boss 351. Time to sign the contract with a commemorative pen. And I'm going to sneak over and steal a couple of those, I think, before we leave. Here is a 62 Corvette custom convertible. Well, last year for the C1 Corvette body styling cycle, uh, this one with an electric opening and closing hood with the Holly EFI on that uh, LS series engine. So this is a full-on resto mod. The last Corvette for a couple of decades with an opening trunk. I was just about to point that out as we come back here. This is it, because of course, when they went to the mid-year, the 1963 through 1967, they didn't have a trunk that could open. And they also introduced the coupe, which did not have a hatchback, which did not come along until later as well. Now, earlier Corvettes, those coves could be had in a contrasting color. Not for 1962. All Corvettes were in a monochrome, one-color paint scheme. And of course, seriously, Resto Mod have got a 6.2 liter LS3 engine, four speed overdrive automatic transmission. The frame has been modified. It's got independent front suspension, tubular A arms, rack and pinion steering. They've pretty much gone to this from front to back and changed just about everything. Now. There's one hard working bidder assistant several clients on the stage. And living here in Arizona, I can appreciate the fact that they also added vintage air to this. So not only can you drive it and have some fun, but you can stay cool in the Arizona sun. Yeah, how long is the convertible season here anyway? My theory is 365 days a oh year. Boy. There are days when it's hot, I just crank on the AC. There's days when it's cold, I crank on the heater. But either way, I can drive with the top down. Thank you, Mr. Chamber of Commerce. Okay, occasionally it'll rain, but usually it doesn't rain all day long. So these late C1s, are they worth more restored to original or resto modded like this one? I think they're pretty much six-figure cars either way. And that one certainly was at $105,000. Congratulations. Now let's hear from Tyler. Well, here's a very special Shelby right here. Now, 
Ford never built a Shelby GT500 convertible, but that doesn't stop Shelby American, a separate tuning company in Las Vegas, from making their own version, basically. They call this the Super Snake. So you can see it is a convertible, and they put that roll bar much like a 68 GT500, uh, but this one is a little special. Another thing you couldn't get on a 2020 GT500 is a manual transmission. They're all dual clutch, but you can see this one is a six-speed manual. Now, they started with a normal Mustang GT convertible, shipped it over to Shelby in Las Vegas, and did this beautiful body treatment as well. Lowered it slightly. You can see that Super Snake badge on the Kona Blue paint and the 20-inch polished wheels. And then under the hood is the five-liter Coyote engine, but they put that big supercharger on top to put it over 825 horsepower. So power to match the GT500, actually quite a bit more in a convertible. And this all bespoke built by hand at Shelby in Las Vegas. Very special. I would say so, and you saw it drawing very close to the building. So be sure to stick around in our remaining Four hours of coverage are on FYI to see it across the block. There's what the last three vehicles across did. And right now we're looking at a 2023 Corvette Stingray. So you might wonder, why are all these new Corvettes on offer at Barrett-Jackson? Well, when the C8 Corvette was introduced, supply could not keep up with demand. A lot of people wanted one, couldn't get one until the aftermarket or the auction market and here we are this is the 70th anniversary version the 3lt is the top trim level msrp ninety two thousand seven hundred dollars let's see which side of that we end up at yeah just about a little less than 1500 miles on the odometer all 495 horsepower and well, when this came, came out, in reality, I think it rocked the supercar world. I mean, what you have is an affordable supercar. I mean, the base price when this came out was just a tad under $60,000. And for that, you know, people say, oh, but you had to get this option and that option and you didn't spend $90,000, $100,000. Yeah, you could. But if you bought the base edition and didn't do anything to it, you still had an amazing supercar with amazing handling and a lot of performance. I couldn't agree more, Rick. $112,000 makes for some pretty good uh, uptick on the value of that car. Because, of course, value is whatever someone is willing to pay for an item. Have fun with it, folks. Now, here's another Corvette. This is a 64 custom convertible. Well, this one's had a heart transplant, still a small block V8, but this one has been heavily massaged uh, with headers and an aftermarket intake distributor carb carburetor fuel injection. Yeah. Um, wider wheels and tires than it was born with. Tubular A arms in the suspension, so a real resto mod here. Disc brakes added. Again, they were not standard in 1964. American Racing torque thrust bags. Yeah, go back to the point we were making earlier. You know, people want a car that looks like a 1964, but they want it to drive like a modern car. And in fact, it's interesting because this color is actually a Lexus color. So not only do we have modern performance, we got modern colors as well. Modern base coat, clear coat paint, giving this Corvette a gloss it never would have had when it left the factory. And this is a two-top car, the folding soft top, and here comes the hard top behind it on its stand. $95,000 at the hammer. What to feel good about. Next on the block will be lot 784.1, a 1955 Bel Air Custom Coupe. Important year for Chevrolet and an important year for this particular body style, whether you call it a shoebox, whether you just call it a Tri-5, and look what they've done under the engine compartment. All brand new LS2 engine, 400 horsepower, but look at what they've done. They've shaved the firewall, the fenders. They've got a beautiful plenum that they put over there. And look at this little touch, how they've got the same hood ornament that you would have seen on the outside underneath. And what's interesting is when you look at the outside of the hood, see if I can get this down, no, can't. This is where the hood ornament would have gone. So they've taken it and put it right in there. 
Well, they've shaved the dash inside as well. Uh, the gauge binnacle up above the steering column has all digital gauges, and the whole rest of the dash has been smooth. But for that radio speaker on the right side, modern stereo in this one, automatic transmission, full custom but retaining most of the original body lines. And the color is red nectarine candy. I'm not sure where they came up with that name, but it works really well. It's a kind of an orangey, maroony kind of red, but it looks perfect under the lights. Even the stainless steel trim down the sides looks like what would been on the 55, but it is all custom and all just subtly very, very different, Bob. Oh, there's a big number coming, but we'll have to wait until we start our next hour here on Barrett Jackson to tell you how it did. Our first two hours of live coverage are done, but we're just scratching the surface here in Scottsdale. Four more hours to go. Welcome to Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auction. I'm Bob Varsha. We have four hours of automotive bliss coming your way here on FYI. The quality of the vehicles crossing the block is soaring, and so are the prices. So let's not waste any time and get right to the block with two of the best of the business, Mike Joy and Rick DeBruel. Thanks, Bob, and hi, everybody. Uh, our buddy Steve Mignanti is recuperating. Hope he's back with us soon. If he was here, he would be reminding me how these Dodge Challengers far outsold the original E-Body Challenger of 1970 to 74. Similar styling, but built on the larger Charger chassis, and the Challenger just about headed for the end of the line. So everybody, get one while you can. Boy, whoever would have thought years ago that when we were in the doldrums of horsepower back in the mid 70s and the 80s and Corvettes were making 175 horsepower that we would see the return of a factory engine that does not just 700 horsepower, but in this case, 800 horsepower. It'll take it zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds. $115,000 takes that car, which incidentally is the same number that a beautiful 55 Chevy Bel Air Custom you may have seen on one of our earlier programs also brought. Now here comes lot 785.1, a 1967 Plymouth Hemi GTX. 50 miles on this car since its restoration, which took five years. Uh, period correct, not original to the car, but a period correct 426 Hemi uh, with the Carter AFB four barrel carburetors, two of them underneath that air cleaner. The GTX was Plymouth's luxury B body car. It did not sell well, so the head of Plymouth asked Brock Yates from Car and Driver, what do I do to get people who are looking at GTOs to buy my car? And Yates said, take everything out of it that doesn't make it go fast and find a way to price it under $3,000, and the Roadrunner was born. Yeah, you could get a Hemi in a Roadrunner, but then it added about $750, which people would go, wait a minute, why am I buying a Roadrunner if I'm doing that? But, well, few people did, and they're very valuable. Now, this particular one, the Hemi's been put back in, you know, and it's got a lot of work that's been done to this particular motor. When they went through, they didn't just, you know, put the same old stock parts back in. They did a beautiful job of rebuilding it, and they point out that it was balanced and blueprinted to just less than one gram, so it, it is designed to run perfectly smooth. This car has a very squarish body style and because of its resemblance to the very pedestrian Belvedere and Coronet, it just didn't sell that well. Sold fine today, Bob. That's 67 grand, you bet, Mike. The Summit Racing Soul sticker goes on with the price for all the world to see when it rolls back into the tents. Now here comes lot 786, a 1966 Caddy Eldorado convertible. 
the last year for this body style. In fact, the next year it would go off in a completely different direction. In fact, at this point, this was not the most expensive Cadillac you could buy. There were years where the Eldorado was, for example, when the Brits back in the late 50s, early 60s. But by now, it was pretty much looking like a DeVille. It would just happen to be a two-door. But the following year, whoa, they changed everything. They went to that front-wheel design, radically different styling. Those beautiful chrome wire wheels. Not sure if those were available, Factory. Look at that bright white interior. Wow, sunglasses out, everybody. And according to the consigner, it's been driven 4,000 miles since the build. So they've done a great job of keeping it looking just as if the, it was a brand new build. Perfectly done on every level. A wreath surrounds the Cadillac crest in at least eight or nine places. There are the nice little merlets. <laughs> And uh, plenty of room in this one. The trunk is fully finished. It's fully lined. The spare tire is covered. And there's the convertible top boot in black to match the one in white uh, that, that sits right here. What a gorgeous parade float this is. And remember where they were just a few years ago. Massive amounts of chrome on the outside of the car. This was considered subtle by the time we've gotten to 1966. Now, no stereo radio here. You got speakers in the dash. You got extra speakers, and you also well, this does have a stereo radio. Look at little speakers on each side of the dash, and in back instead of a single speaker, split speakers for the left and right channel. And then hammers for one hundred and five thousand dollars. That six-figure number is becoming a regular thing here on the auction block. Okay, here comes an auction favorite, a replica of the 1967 Mustang Eleanor. Yeah, I may point out that this is not an Eleanor licensed edition, that this is inspired by Eleanor. That's the best way we could phrase this. Nicely done in terms of the fact that this was actually built back in 2007. And so it's an older build, but boy, in terms of looking at it today, they've done a great job with it. It still looks good. And it's interesting that they've chosen the color that they've chosen because so many of them we see in that pepper gray. This is sort of a greenish tint to it. Well, if you go back to the late 60s, not many could afford a Shelby Mustang. And a college buddy of mine, Ray Gorski, he had a 67 Mustang Fastback, and he was turning it into a Shelby clone one paycheck at a time. So one month he'd show up with the uh, roof scoops, and then a month later he'd have the brake scoops, and then he'd have the front uh, rape apron, and eventually it got to look just like a Shelby, you know, GT350 or 500. Didn't like that the, the Johnny Cash song about building it one part at a time, taking them out of the factory? Yeah, I can see exactly what you're talking about. Five liter HO, high performance V8 engine, five speed manual transmission. It's got that Ford nine inch rear end. Fresco Green Pearl is the name of this color. I like it, and I, I agree with you, Rick. A nice contrast to the usually seen pepper gray on these. Got a foam bitter in there. Eleanor inspired by the Eleanor in the movie Gone in 60 Seconds starring Nicolas Cage and keep that name in your memory bank. We're going to hear it again here at Barrett Jackson. Signed by Carol Shelby on the dashboard. And of course, it wouldn't actually take the entire car to Carol Shelby. Generally, what they did was they just pulled that part out, had him sign it, and then make a donation to the foundation. I'll tell you, people look at those signatures and they go, oh my gosh, but to have the man who designed the car sign your car like a Dan Gurney AAR Cuda or a Carroll Shelby Mustang, that is a pleasure that most car owners will never know. So there were three bidders involved in that project. You saw one of them walk away. Foam bidder was done, and that gentleman picks it up. High noon here at Barrett Jackson, and we haven't even gotten to Friday or Saturday yet. The best is still to come, but what we have here is pretty cool. Here's a car we talked about a little bit earlier going to break. It's a 2007 Shelby GT500 Super Snake convertible. Well, wasn't it yesterday? No, it was, uh, yeah, yesterday a Super Snake just rocked the block. The fact that it was a Carroll Shelby birthday edition, everybody had their hand in the air. 
the thing that should put your hand in the air for this one is it has 130 or less than 130 original miles on the odometer. When you look inside, it still has the seat covers protecting the seat. So this is essentially a brand new 2007 Ford Shelby GT500 Super Snake. Now remember, came off the line as a Ford GT, then shipped to Shelby American where all these changes were done. And by the way, we should point out, you know, how important it is to have Carol Shelby sign the dashboard. This week, Peter Brock has been here at the Barrett Jackson auction. He's got a trailer company who's out signing. And Peter Brock, if you don't know, I mean, he's the guy who basically penned the C2 Corvette. He's the guy who designed the Cobra Daytona. He was the first employee of Shelby American. And then went on, of course, to have great success racing Datsuns. Peter was here yesterday. Unfortunately, he's not able to stay the rest of the weekend. But... Uh, Lives outside Las Vegas and still very, very active in the automotive world 50 years on. He became a great automotive racing photographer as well. One year I was at Sebring doing a pit stop, you know, covering the race. I look, the guy jumps over the wall, look over, and it's Peter Brock. And I'm like, you're like 70 years old, jumping the wall. Six hundred plus horsepower. Wow. Ninety-five thousand dollars to pay for all that horsepower, plus tax and other fees. Nice. Another break coming up here in the Arizona desert, metro area of Phoenix, Arizona, to be specific. We'll be back with more Barrett Jackson from Westworld in just a moment. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auction. I'm in the McGuire staging lanes previewing an awesome car for an incredible cause. This is a 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Z06, a very difficult car to get in its own right because of its legendary engine in the back. Five and a half liter V8, flat playing crank, 670 horsepower, the most powerful naturally aspirated engine in production and this one even more special because it has the Z07 package. Less than 10% of these really hard to get Z06s had this package for better performance. And this one benefits a great cause, the Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation. So, already a really special hard to get car. Charity cars tend to rock the block. We'll see what this brings for a great cause. Indeed we will. About a quarter of an hour it should cross the block and those are always special occasions at every Barrett Jackson auction. 77,000 takes a 1969 Camaro to that gentleman we assume. Great looking car. Another convertible. And here comes a car that Tyler previewed earlier for us. Lot 789.1 is a 2020 Shelby Super Snake Convertible. And this one with only 3,000 miles on the clock and it's three years of existence. Kona Blue over Ebony Black. 825 horsepower from its Whipple supercharged 5 liter V8 with a 6 speed manual. Rick, uh, 1970 was a lot of fun, but the muscle car era, the real muscle car era, is right now. Absolutely, and, and also not just from a horsepower perspective, but up front where you see these brakes, six caliper brakes, the ability to not just go fast, but to stop, to be able to use the performance of the ability for the brakes to do the job, for the suspension to do the job. These cars today are the full package when it comes to performance. You know, it, it, it's funny, we race uh, historic Trans Am cars around the country. The actual cars that raced in the series from 66 to 72, all nicely restored. Uh, we were giving rides at Sonoma to VIPs, and we didn't have enough race cars with right seats for all the people that wanted to ride. So we grabbed the Toyota Camry XSE track pace car. That thing was darn near as fast as our 70 era Trans Am cars. Uh, yeah, the best time to be a performance enthusiast driver is right now. And it also makes you really appreciate the drivers from that era who were able to take those cars and go down the corkscrew at Laguna Seca or go on the tracks that they went on and do the performance they did, you know, because once again, those cars weren't as refined. Wow, super snake, super money. 
105 to be precise. Yet another six figure sale here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. We want to make sure we hit that charity car at the bottom of the hour, so stay with us. Welcome back to the greatest collector car auction in the world with over 2,000 cars going across the block this entire week, all at no reserve. This is unheard of, but right now I'm with lot 797, a 1967 Bronco Custom. And with our Blueprint Engines cam, let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood. Now, this has a Blueprint engine, hand-built in Nebraska, 5-liter V8, and every single engine they actually dyno test before they send it out and the buyer they get that dyno tested information now similar to a lot of these first generation broncos we see the wheel wells have been cut to fit these beautiful oversized tires and i want you to take a peek at these speakers in the back custom jerry cans modified into speakers i mean everything has been upgraded on this build and it looks completely different from when it was born bob Oh, it does that. Love those jerry can speakers. So what have we got on the block? Lot 791.1 is a 1971 Ford F100 custom pickup. Yeah, great big custom pickup, but not over the top custom. I mean, just a moment ago, but we were, uh, in our commercial break, we saw a very custom pickup truck roll across the block. This one actually has some custom touches, but for the most part, designed to look very stock, although under the hood, you got that Coyote 5 liter engine with an automatic six speed transmission that's been hooked up to it. So it, uh, we'll call this one kind of a resto mod kind of style. Take a look at this front suspension. Don't expect a smooth ride with this one. It is still a solid axle, straight axle, a four-wheel drive. No independent suspension in the front here. This generation of Ford truck had something cool to offer. The fact that the cab was actually about three inches longer, deeper, than most of its competitors. As a result, if you were buying a Ford, you had just a little bit more legroom. If you were a tall guy, this is what you wanted. I'm not up on my Ford uh, pickup terminology, but uh, I believe they called this the bump side uh, because of this body character line uh, that goes front to back. You know, another interesting fact from this generation, this was the first generation to have factory installed air conditioning. Up until that point, it had to be done by the dealer. They finally went, oh, you mean the people who buy these want to be comfortable? Who knows what they'll think of next? Way it goes to its new home. Let's see what rolls up behind. Should be lot 792 as the Ford rolls away. There it is. 72 GMC C1500 custom pickup. Well, there used to be a myth perpetuated, I think, by GMC truck salesmen that their trucks were not only professional grade, but they were stronger than Chevy trucks. They had thicker sheet metal. They were made to a higher standard. Well, they were made on the same assembly line, one right after the other. The, the GMC got a chrome grill surround and chrome bumpers in most models, but otherwise, apart from the badging, the Chevy and GMC pickups were, and even today are, the same. So what's custom about this? Well, first off, that spectacular paint job that you feel like you can just dive in, but also under the hood, we closed it a moment ago, but we've got a 502 cubic inch V8 crate engine that's been installed. So they've done a great job of once again making this kind of resto mod style, but of course, look at the, the four wheel disc brakes, how they've set in those tires. So from a distance, it looks relatively stock with a great paint job, but the more you look at it, look at those big exhausts coming out the rear bumper. You see those nice four wheel discs there and then the work that's been done to the back. This is the art of the exhaust that Steve Magnante talks about so often. I love how they've cut away the bumper to make way for those quad exhausts. GMC lettering raised there, kind of hiding in plain sight on the tailgate. I like that. 50,000. Who? Me? I got it. Happy news. And I'm sorry I hesitated there on introducing the car. I got my red pickup trucks messed up. Moving on. How about a 1967 Corvette 427 435? 
Well, this is the real one. This one deserves to have the Stinger hood, which was 1967 only, because here it is. The 427, 435 horsepower V8 with the triple two-barrel carburetors. Now, how much power did this engine really make? Chevrolet, in their promotional material, stopped the horsepower curve at 435 so they wouldn't get in trouble with the insurance companies. 475 to 500 is a more likely number at peak horsepower RPM. If you think about it, 435 horsepower, that wasn't getting them in trouble with the insurance companies. Interestingly enough, this was the peak horsepower engine you could get in 1967. This was the top of the line, but it wasn't the top of the line engine. That was the L88. Now, technically, it only produced 430. Once again, we believe it was probably more, but it was what that engine was made of that made it special. Well, this car is producing $170,000, and I don't think we're done. Whoa, there's the deuce. Beautiful base coat, clear coat paint. Much prettier than the day it was born. Turbine wheels, side pipes, 67, tricarb. Oh, yeah. Four speed manual transmission. Now they have dialed it back just a little bit. Sometimes in their enthusiasm, they want to make sure they've got the right number. So we dialed it back to $180,000. Only $180,000. Uh, they're creeping back up on it. There's the deuce again. Wow, somebody was determined to pay the deuce for that car. That gentleman, uh, enjoy it, folks. Wow, and since we have a new top seller, let's have a look at today's top five brought to you by Haggerty. Starting with lot 752 at $130,000 for a Chevrolet 3100 pickup truck, 10,000 more for Silverado Custom, 160 grand for the Chevy Camaro Z28 early in the day, and as you just saw, $200,000 for a 67 Chevy Corvette. Now let's go back to the block for a 1957 Bel Air Custom Coupe, my favorite year. Yeah, very, very custom. I love everything they've done to this. They say it was a two-year restoration. Underneath the hood is a 6.2-liter V8, 455 horsepower, made it, interestingly enough, to an eight-speed transmission. LED headlights, U.S. bags, wheels, a bespoke center console, much more modern bucket seats than this could have worn new. But all the great Bel Air styling touches uh, are there. The V that indicated you bought your Chevy with a V8. The hideaway gas filler right here in the left side fin. I mean, 57 Bel Air. That's a blue chip collectible. And this one done to a high standard. Color, red color candy, and look how they've put it on the dashboard, that white interior. They followed through from the inside to the outside. $73,000 takes it. And now it's time to sell a great car that Tyler described earlier for a great cause. So Let's listen to the house. I really appreciate it. On behalf of the Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation, my father, my best friend, he passed away from amyloidosis, killed my mother, my family, myself, really bent us out of shape. And what we decided to do was celebrate, have fun with it, raise some money for amyloidosis. So that's what this event's all about. So bid with confidence. Thank you guys again for having us. All right, now tell us a little bit about the car. Baker, gonna need Mike one also. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a remarkable car. 2023 Chevy Corvette Z063LZ. Powered by the 5.5 liter V8 engine, eight speed dual clutch transmission. Remarkable car, every single dollar, Mr. Steve and Mr. Craig Wright is going directly to the Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a great opportunity. A great opportunity, these are great cars to drive. You get to write the check straight there. 
Joseph, let's go. All right, look here. But nobody raises money for charity like Barrett Jackson. No buy fee for the buyer, no sell fee for the consigner. You write your check directly to the charity. That is just as seamless as can be. And then it's up to you and your accountant to talk about any potential uh, tax consequences. And not only do they you know, make it exciting for the charity, raise some great money, but they make it great for the buyers as well. They bring great cars that get sold, like this one, the Z06 3LZ, the top of the line, the top trim option. It's got pretty much everything you could ask for, the magnetic selective ride, performance exhaust. It's got the Z07 ultimate performance package for the suspension. Well option. This one has the carbon brakes, and how about that big wing? Hanging off the back. $220,000, and as Mike explained, all of it going to a great charity. It's all part of the traditions of Barrett-Jackson. We'll be back with more from Scottsdale. Well, I'm sure the weather's been tough in various parts of the country in the last week or so, but here in Scottsdale, after a few days of rain to open the week, we've got this kind of weather, magnificent sunsets, mid-60s temperatures, perfect for trotting out some of the greatest cars in automotive history, sending them across the block, and giving the bidders the opportunity to take their favorite home. $82,000 at the hammer for this 2005 Lamborghini Gallardo. We saw it one in dark gray yesterday. And this one, I do like it in yellow. Giallo. Okay, also from across the sea, lot 795.1 is a 2016 Bentley Continental GTC convertible. I believe this is the newest one of these we've seen on the Barrett Jackson auction block this week. The color is described as white sand over linen interior. Beautiful car. What, 250 some thousand dollars new? What will it bring today? Well, as I often point out, you know, with a Bentley GT, a Bentley GTC, a Continental, any of those, you, you pull up to the uh, to the restaurant, hand the keys to the valet, and you're going to be parked out front. Doesn't matter really what generation of modern Bentley you pull up in, it still attracts a lot of attention. And this particular one, as you mentioned, is two hundred fifty thousand dollars new, and we're currently bid at only eighty thousand dollars. Well, I'm not sure those twenty-one inch ten-spoke wheels are factory, especially in black. They give the car kind of a very different, almost a street rod look, a, a term you don't often associate with Bentley. There were some changes in this just the year before the 2015 year model. They had a new front bumper, a smaller radiator shell, redesigned fenders, and a new hood ornament up front. So some subtle changes in uh, the, just the year before that carried over to this model as well. 50,000 miles on the clock, so this one has been well enjoyed, but still has a tremendous amount of life left in it. Here's Just over one hundred thousand dollars. That Bentley. Don't forget Barrett-Jackson.com is your source for all information about the world's greatest collector car auctions. Every question you might have will be answered there. Check out Barrett-Jackson.com. Have fun. Here comes lot 796, a 2006 Ferrari Scaglietti. A big two plus two touring car is what this is with a 12 cylinder engine, the F1 semi automatic transmission, a Ferrari Daytona style stitching on uh, the bucket seats and the rear seats. 
So this would be your Ferrari Executive Express rather than a sports or GT. This is more of a touring car. So where did they get the name Scalietti? Well, Scalietti was a coach builder actually in Modena and a good buddy with Enzo Ferrari. So when Ferrari was first in the 50s, starting to build the car that made so much success for him, Scalietti came along and said, well, why don't we team up together? So the two of them built some of the most spectacular cars, the Testarossa, the 250 GTO. It was Scalietti's work that you see and admire today. 533 horsepower from that V12. 85,000 takes it to its new home. I'd say that's a pretty good buy if the cars had recent service because that can be expensive. Scalietti, Pininfarina, Ferrari fans know all the great coach builders. Now here's a vehicle April previewed earlier. I really like this thing. It's a 66. VW double cab transporter. Double cabin, that's what they used to call them in Germany. You know, they originally came out with the Volkswagen bus and the pickup came out in the early 1950s. Some people began to customize them and put on the extra cab. And of course, Volkswagen eventually looked at that and said, hey, wait a minute, maybe we got to do that. So then in 1959, that's when they came up with the double cab concept. Yeah, these are abbreviated. They're called DOCAs uh, for the uh, double cab. Plenty of room uh, inside. You could see three or four across there. And as on most of these uh, European and Far Eastern pickups, the bed sides fold down. So it becomes what the Aussies call a tray bed or a flatbed as well as a pickup. Well, it's the ability to load it from either side, right-hand side, left-hand side, whatever you want to do. And let's see, they've done some resto modding here, which I think is great. Look how they've given it increased horsepower because it didn't have a lot of horsepower back then. I think they were running a 30 horse at that point in time, but they've got a lot more coming out of this probably over 2,000 cc engine. And up close, the paint, the bodywork, everything is perfect on this. Way better than new, and I love the color. That they, they didn't mess with that original two-tone color scheme. 68,000. That gentleman gets it. Fist bumps, high fives, handshakes, maybe a smooch mixed in there. Well, nope, not so far. Okay, have fun with that. The mind reels with ideas of what you could do with that thing. Okay, here's lot 797, a 1967 Ford Bronco Custom. Well, on this one, apparently built without a roof, or uh, is it rebuilt without a roof? The fenders have been cut for the big flares, but there is a, a very authentic uh, five-liter blueprint-built engine with its four-speed transmission, high-compression motor, and fuel injection. So all modern convenience is here. Yeah, big, huge lift, about f uh, five and a half inches or so. And these days, all of these body panels can be purchased on the secondary market. The, interestingly enough, it's only going to cost you, I think, less than $300 to get the sheet metal. Now, there's some other parts you have to buy, and, you know, there's also some massaging that you have to do. It doesn't just bolt on. It's not quite that simple. But the point being, you can buy all the parts necessary, both underneath and up on top, to recreate or rebuild a Bronco. So not only does this have a suspension lift, it also has a body lift. The body has been lifted and spaced away from the frame to get this closer to the sky. You can feel the anticipation in the room for another $100,000 sale, 90,000. Take that one away. And the last two vehicles that crossed the block were both previewed for us by April Rose. So she is working hard today. Here's lot 797.1, a 67 Chevelle Malibu Custom. Well, the base Chevelle was the 300, then you got to the 500, and the deluxe version was the Malibu, and that's what uh, this one is portrayed to be. Two-door hardtop, the most desirable body style uh, in a tin top, and under hood, anything but stock. Yeah, come a long way, 525 horsepower underneath the hood from a very modern Dino Tune GM LS3 crate engine. Last year for this body style, you're either somebody who prefers the first generation or you prefer the second generation and what happened. But boy, this is a great way that this one's been done. Everything has been done to a very high degree. And taking a look, we got Wilwood brakes for front and rear. 
aftermarket gauges. Uh, they are still, some are digital, some are analog, but they're all aftermarket. Beautiful base coat, clear coat paint, making this look uh, way better than it came off the assembly line. Vin starts with a 136, so uh, it was, I don't believe it was originally an SS, but they, and they're not putting any SS badging on. They've simply done it as a custom. Ninety-five thousand takes it. I suspect that was a group effort. Signature goes on, and the car goes wherever he wants it. Now here comes lot seven ninety-eight, a nineteen seventy-two Chevy K five Blazer Custom. Wow, I, I like the uh, houndstooth upholstery that you'd expect to see in a Camaro, not on a Blazer. Here's a 5.3 liter LS V8, 12 bolt Yukon Duragrip, posit traction, rear axle. This thing's made to go anywhere you want. You know, the Bronco came first. Blazer was a little bit late to the game, but they went in a different direction, rather with a short chassis, a dedicated chassis that Ford came up with. They said, well, let's just put it on a truck, and they did a great job of it. You like the color? Mercedes did. It's one of theirs. Uh, 1960s Mercedes blue gray. Looks pretty here. I mentioned that Bronco, how it's so easy to buy the aftermarket parts. You can literally buy almost the entire body for this generation of Blazer for about $15,000. Now, once again, a lot of work is going to go into that, but all the parts are available. I particularly like the blackout trim combined with this blue gray exterior color. Uh, there is not a speck of chrome anywhere on this car and I think this is entirely appropriate. Looks great just the way it is. It not only has a five inch lift but they have a soft ride suspension. So the goal is to make it just a little bit more gentle. Now with these big tires you're still going to feel it as you're going down the road. But at least they've worked to make it make it a little bit smoother. No question about it. These vehicles are hot. $102,000. We got another break coming up, but in a short while, an interesting pair. A 2021 Ford Bronco Custom SUV with all the goodies, along with the trailer that goes with it. It's a twofer coming up from Scottsdale. Back under the big top at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Here is the combination we previewed before the break. 2021 Ford Bronco Custom SUV with accompanying trailer. Where do we begin? I mean, from front to back, this thing is amazing. I mean, you look at the very front, you've got a very customized modern era Bronco. They've taken the doors off. I've got, got these big roll bars, calling this Urban Madness 2.0. Now that's just the tow vehicle. And then we go to the very back where we have an amazing trailer that's been built. It's a little camper. And just show you the details, come all the way to the back where you've got everything perfectly laid out. Yeah, places for your knives, these, that, your plates, everything. This is set up to have some serious fun. And you know what I love about this is how they've carried the paint scheme from the very front, the tow vehicle, into the trailer as well. It's got the same, the blue and the beige going over and they come all the way back, the same paint scheme in this. So, you know, built by our buddies at RMD Garage, they did an amazing job on this. By the way, I forgot to mention when it says Urban Madness, they put two S's on the end. To make sure you really understand it. Nice winch up front. Sold for $86,000. All right, ladies, well done. You wanted it, you got it. We'll have some fun with that, I'm sure. Nice Arizona motif. Okay, let's move on to a 2022 Ram 1500 TRX Ignition Edition pickup, VIN 001. 
Well, that's one of two special editions for the year. 875 of these were made. It includes a retractable uh, tonneau cover, motorized running boards, a top-level two package, got you the orange carbon fiber interior, the panoramic roof, and the HK sound system. So 2024, last year for the Hellcat V8-powered unit, so not many of these around. Once upon a time, you know, we called it the Dodge Ram. In the modern era, it's simply Ram. They're their own division, not part of Dodge, Plymouth, Chrysler, or anything else. Vin 001. The TRX conceived as a competitor to the Ford Raptor. The vehicle identification number and having that very first one, 001, is important. $105,000 it took. And I do believe that gentleman has quite a tab running here at Barrett Jackson. He's having as much fun as I suspect he is. Here's a lot 800.1, a 1970 Chevy Suburban Custom SUV. Boy, beautiful paint. Uh, it is a metallic black, uh, similar to as used by Mercedes and Porsche, where the metallic flecks are different shades of red, blue, and green. Looks kind of like uh, a Porsche Atlas gray, if you're familiar with that color. A 6.2 liter direct injected LT1 engine and all wheel or four wheel drive. Uh, PPG calls this color titanium black metallic, and a lot of clear coat went on there over it. Now, in 1970, Suburbans were four doors, and I'm counting the tailgate. There was no door behind the driver's door on the left side. That's because a lot of these were sold for use as small school buses. You didn't want kids getting out on the wrong side. You wanted them on the curbside. So thus only three doors plus the tailgate on these Suburbans. I love one of the stylized things they've done in the back. They've put the round tail lights on. Whether you want to think, you know, Camaro, Corvette, whatever within the GM family, it's a different look and a different style for the way this would have been done. $100,000. That man was committed, he hung in, and he got it done. And we will move on, approaching the end of this hour on FYI, to a 1979 Ford Bronco custom SUV. Second generation of the Ford Bronco, and as we've talked about, it's getting harder and harder to find the donor vehicles for the first generation. So, you know, some folks have simply moved on to customizing the second generation. There's also a group of people who grew up with these and prefer these larger, longer wheelbase editions of the Bronco. This one with a much more modern engine than it was born with and a 2023 Bronco color Ford Azure gray metallic. I love these two tones with the white roof and the white lower body side. Yeah, that nice Gen 3 Coyote engine and it was customized right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Time for me to interrupt, folks. We'll let you know how it sells on the other side of the break, and it looks like the number will be a good one. The good news is it's Thursday. We still have 22 hours of Barrett-Jackson action still to come on FYI and the History Channel. Welcome to the world's greatest collector car auction, Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. The hammer is high, but the bidding continues on this 1979 Ford Bronco custom SUV. We're at $190,000. That custom all the way, a nice Coyote engine underneath, and it's got superchargers pumping out over 800 horsepower. 
2013 Bronco Azure Gray Metallic KMC Billet Wheels. Beautiful, brand new build. I can't believe the number. Well, we've talked about the fact we've seen the Gen 1 Broncos bring big money. I think we can say the Gen 2 has definitely arrived. $197,000. I thought for a moment there we were going to have our third $200,000 sale of the day and the auction topped by a 2023 Corvette Z063LZ at $220,000, all of which went to charity. That's the name of the game at Barrett Jackson. Fun, dazzling cars, dazzling bids, charity, family, and more. So dig in and stay with us all the way through Saturday night here at FYI and the History Channel. I forgot to introduce us. Bob Varsha along with Mike Joy, Rick DeBrule, Tyler Hoover, and April Rose. Glad to have you with us. This is a 1970 Chevy K10 custom pickup truck. Well, the K indicates that it's four-wheel drive. This one's been given a modern LSV8 swap. Has a plaid interior, and I love the mid green, mint green, and white factory color two-tone. Yeah, something different. So many times we see them in red or blue or white or black or whatever, but to see something in this mint green is pretty special. Underneath the hood, we close it now, but a 450 horsepower LS crate engine that's put on this. Tell you what, this body style it goes all the way to 1972. You just see more and more of them coming across the block. I'm saying this tends to be right now the most favorite vehicle to customize. Man in the upper right is a Barrett Jackson staffer monitoring the online bidding. Just one of the ways you can bid at Barrett Jackson in person, through proxy, online, or on the phone. One hundred and fifty-five thousand, no, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. It's still going. It's still going. Yep. There it goes. Trick me once, shame on me. Trick me twice, shame on me again. Anyway, here's Tyler Hoover. Well, we're seeing some incredible numbers on customs here at Barrett Jackson. And here's a custom Corvette that, that's coming up. You can see body wise, very stock looking, all the chrome that it came with in 1958, and a subtle two tone that they would have had, silver with gray. But you look down at the suspension, obviously it's lowered. It's riding on a custom tubular chassis, independent front and rear suspension. And those wheels, they look like a C6 Corvette. Well, it's giving you a hint at what's under the hood. LS3 V8, what you would have found in a C6 Corvette. So well north of 400 horsepower. And the one thing that I really like about this 58 Corvette is on the inside. Many of these, when they build the custom Corvettes, they put a nice, comfy, cozy automatic transmission because people want to cruise in these things. Very unusual to see one still having a manual transmission. And I guess I'm a dinosaur. I like rowing my, deer, my gears, so I love this build. Thank you, Tyler. We're in the tall cotton now. The action on stage for this 72 GMC K1500 custom pickup, $145,000 bid. Well, same song, second verse. A brand new, fresh build of a two-tone Chevy or GMC pickup, in this case a 1500, so a half ton pickup with the Sierra Grande trim and the uh, houndstooth upholstery. Love it. Yeah, I got that brand new Vortex six liter V8 engine, automatic transmission and big money. $150,000. Well done. Another break coming up, but we don't want to miss anything. So we'll be back before you know it with more. Look at that sunset. Just another of the charms of Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Back at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, where moments ago, this beautiful 62 Corvette 327 360 fueling, meaning fuel injected convertible, brought the roof down at $150,000, tying for the number six sale of the day and the auction. Right now, the bidding is poised at $135,000 for a 2019 Corvette ZR1. I'll tell you what, you'd be forgiven if you thought you were sitting here at Barrett Jackson on a Friday and not just a Thursday. The numbers we're seeing across the block now, like 
for this ZR1 2019 into the line of the front engine Corvettes. Big bucks. How about that? The number's stuck at 137. Somebody tossed in another two grand and got it for $137,000. And I even like the color. Okay, now let's switch brands. Here's a 2023 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon 170. Well, here it is, the end of the line for the Hellcat, and they went out with a bang. Over 1,000 horsepower, and this thing set up to drag race, zero to 60, about a second and a half, 109 second quarter mile. Since they're not making these anymore and transitioning to electric, it's an instant classic selling over their MSRP well and above already at the current bid. We're closing in on $200,000 right now. So why do they call it a 170? Well, what they're doing is playing with the concept that it's you could use E85 fuel on this. And since it's theoretically 85% alcohol, that would make it 170 proof in the alcohol world. So that's where they get the 170 name from. Some unique tricks with the Hellcat. The intakes actually in the headlights, the center headlights, they have a little halo dome around them, but also air is able to go in to breathe into that massive supercharger. This one you can see set up with the drag radials on the back so it can hook up. Of course, they are wide bodies in the rear as well. And with the Demon 170s, you can order them any way you want. This one in sort of a stealth gray. So a little bit of a sleeper if you come up to this one on a stoplight. Yeah, the official name for this color, by the way, is Destroyer Gray from, you know, Battleships Destroyers. And inside the red, Demonic Red. So we've got Destroyer Gray over Demonic Red is the color combination. Closed in on 200. We're there. By the way, this has a 220 mile an hour speedometer. I thought we might make it for the price. They got to 200, and the hammer dropped immediately. Nicely done, folks. A nice little tip there for the bidder assistant. Now let's join April Rose. Hey, Bob, I'm with this 2020 Shelby GT500. Now, we don't know what Shelby's going to do with the next generation, but if it's anything like this, it'll absolutely be epic. Now, this GT500 has pretty much every option, even the carbon fiber track pack, which you can tell by the carbon fiber wheels. Now, this is an $18,000 option, but what's even crazier is that they chose the option for the painted racing stripes. Now, these as a sticker is just a few hundred dollars, but painted from the factory, that's an extra $10,000. So total MSRP over $100,000, which sounds like a lot for a Mustang, but you get that 760 horsepower V8 going to a dual clutch transmission, 3.5 second, 0 to 60. This is supercar performance in a Mustang. I need the keys. I need to know where to find them. Beautiful car, an even more beautiful sunset out there. Now, here's another 63 Corvette Tribute Custom. This is a 2009 Corvette dressed up as a split window. Yeah, we saw one of these done by the same customizer, Carl Customs, out of Des Moines, Iowa, go across the block yesterday. I think it was the number one seller on Thursday. And it's a great job. They've done a wonderful job of taking a modern Corvette, or almost modern now, 2009, and giving it that split window look. You know, you look at it, the dimensions aren't quite right, but there's some places when you look at it from the right angle, boy, they have done a great job of just nailing the way this 1963 Corvette split window would have looked. Of course, it's much more popular to take a 60 C2 and give it all of the C6 engines and chassis and all that stuff. So doing sort of the reverse, less popular, but good price. $122,000. Remember, the other one went for $117,000. It's a pretty competitive market. And the way it goes. Now, time for some Haggerty Fast Facts on our next vehicle, which is a 1969 Ford Talladega prototype. It was built to test the Talladega concept and design, particularly the aerodynamics. It was never intended to be sold to the public, and fewer than 10 prototypes were built. As Mike Joy has explained previously, it's rare to see a prototype or a concept car escape Detroit or wherever the manufacturer is based, but this one is a very special car. 
Well, in 1969, Dodge came out with the Charger Daytona. You know, that sharp nose in the front, the big wing in the back. Ford had to come up with something on its own, and this is what they did. They said, okay, how can we extend that nose just a little bit, slope it down just a little bit, come up with some creative body panels, and this is what they came up with. Not a bad job on it overall. All that stuff was hand-built. And in 1969, this car, not this exact car, but the Talladega that was raced, won a total of 29 races. So they did a great job of coming up with a challenger for the, the Dodge Charger Daytona. So other than the nose, other modifications were done to the rocker panels to improve aerodynamics. And the hood, with that way that sloped down and extended to sort of look like the Superbirds, uh, lost the latch mechanism, so it only clips in. And they do not come for sale very often, if ever. And there's the one right now that's going to sell in a couple seconds. And to the point Steve Davis is making, I mean, this isn't just a Talladega. This is one of the prototypes. This is the way they were trying to figure out how they were going to do it and what they were going to do. You know, it's very possible this isn't exactly like the final one that came off the block. You know, it's probably very similar. Maybe it's the exact look that they, that they finally came up with and created and put into production. But this is how they came up with the idea of doing what they were going to do in 1969. $120,000 takes it. Now we're going to grab another gear, so stay with us. We'll be back to Scottsdale. Boom, go the numbers here at Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale, Arizona. Right there, you see a beautiful 2023 Ford F 150 Raptor R. It just hammered away at $157,000. That's our number seven sale of the day and the auction. And the hits just keep on coming. Let's go to the block for this 67 Camaro RS Custom. Yeah, very custom. Underneath the hood, 525 horsepower coming out of this very modern engine. But it's the way it's been done inside that is so nice. They've shaved the firewall. They've made it so that everything inside is nice and clean. And it looks like an absolutely brand new, fresh build. That 6.2 liter LS3 engine, the aluminum intake, the fully polished serpentine accessory drive all goes through to the back at a nine inch rear end. And of course, there's just the bodywork that goes along with this. Obviously, much more spectacular than it ever looked in its original days. And let's take a look at the chassis cam to see if it's just as nice underneath. I'm sure it is. Yep, there's that LS3. It's a first year Camaro, but it doesn't look like a first year Camaro underneath. Holy moly. Big exhaust, large drive shaft to handle that LS3. You see that four link rear suspension? Certainly wasn't around in 1967. Beautiful. Yeah, it's interesting because in 1967, the rear suspension was actually a bit of a problem for the Camaro. You know, the way they designed it, it had a lot of what they call wheel hop, you know. And so in 1968, they did staggered shocks. They were able to take that away. This, holy cow, this is on another planet. You were talking about that four-link rear suspension. And, and not just the way it's been designed, but the way it looks as well. One of the small touches that makes these customs just go crazy is just little things. You can see the front glass. It's put in like a modern car. You don't have the chrome trim all the way around it in the front and the rear. They kept all the best parts of the classics but modernized it where they could. $120,000 and you saw all the high points of the car build on the window. Very cool. And we'll move along. Lot 806 is a 1956 Bel Air custom hardtop. So the question is, which shoebox Chevy is best? Is it the original, the 1955 with the Ferrari-ish grille? Is it the 57, the Bel Air with all the bling? Or is it this one right here, a 1956? My buddy Ray Mayon loves these because you've got the expanded grille in the front. It just looks so much bigger and bolder. By the way, the nickname on this one is Red Hots. Well, you can see how red hot the engine looks at LS3, and they have lighting on it to where it looked like it's going through the pearly gates into heaven. Just the presentation, unreal. You can see they smoothed out the firewall as well. Little custom touches like that. They shaved off the door locks. 
Little stuff to make this custom really pop. The paint unbelievable as well. Deep, deep red, white two-toe. Yeah, this is built right here in Arizona. John Brad Bradley, who used to work with Patrick Pogran at Cla Patrick's Classy Chevys, is the guy behind this. And boy, you can see every ounce of what he's done to this, both from the body, the sides, underneath, the Willwood disc brakes, the adjustable coilover shocks. This is on another planet. You can see why we're up closing in on $200,000. Yeah, the ride is just perfect on as far as the stance of the Art Morrison chassis. You go inside, you can see modern digital gauges seamlessly integrated into the 56 Bel Air, and even some mood lighting like a modern car into the dashboard. Just beautiful. Well, I said we were closing in on 200,000. We're there. Sold for $200,000 to that gentleman. Yeah, nice round of applause. Very cool car. And that jumps up into the top four sales of the day and the auction. Here's something I like a lot. A 69 Mercury Cougar XR7 convertible. Yeah, we've been seeing some wild customs that have been flying across the block. Now it's time to get something back which is much more original. In this case, a 69 XR7. Underneath the hood, something very important and very special. A 428 cubic inch. It's got that Cobra Jet V8 engine, C6 transmission. It's got updated everything. And boy, it had one repaint, believe it or not, that was done back in 1979. Since then, this is the way the paint has been kept. Now, not a perfect paint job. I can see a few flaws, but overall, it looks great. Yes, yeah, sort of a driver or a survivor, depending on if you call a repaint a survivor, but also important, that 428 Cobra Jet is numbers matching. So it has the right engine, original interior. Yes, you could go back and restore this since it's been repainted once, but since it was done so long ago, it looks like an all-original Survivor with the, just the right patina. I'll tell you what, I'd be inclined just to finish it off. You know, it looks so perfect up everywhere else. Why not just go ahead and finish off that paint job? If it was the original paint job from 1969, I'd debate it. But boy, now, having said that, paint jobs are not inexpensive these days. With paint costing a good $1,200 a gallon, boy, it's not going to be inexpensive to paint it, but boy, I think it'd be worth it. And $75,000 is a great place to start making that car what it could be as the Summit Racing Sold sticker goes on. Away goes that Cougar XR7 to its new home. Okay, how about another Chevelle? This one in blue with white stripes. It's a 1970 LS6. This one was sold new in Utah, and it is restored to day one condition, including some chalk marks on the firewall to indicate what uh, assembly steps had been done by what shift before, say, a shift change. And as an LS6, this is rare air right here. At the beginning of our broadcast day, when we were talking with Craig Jackson, the company chairman and CEO, about what cars he was looking forward to seeing cross the block, this is one of them. The biggest engine you could get back then, and of course, 1970 being the high water year. The only thing that would slightly hold it back is an automatic transmission, not a four speed. But still, if you're looking for the big dog of 1970, this is it. First place senior award winner in uh, VCCA judging. And Jerry McNish, Barrett Jackson's uh, Chevrolet high performance expert, is going to speak to this car. I just wanted to say hello to everybody. We've been out here for almost two weeks inspecting cars here. This, uh, this auction has been the most incredible with the quality of cars here. Some of them are exceptional. And this car, this LS6 Chevelle, has its original engine, transmission, and build sheet. It's one of the best you'll find. It's Astro Blue. Don't miss out on this car. It's an exceptional car. 140, 150, 140, When Jerry's at Barrett Jackson, he goes and vets all of the very high performance Chevrolets to make sure if you're claiming it's a Z28 or an LS6, that that's how it's born. And he has a business that goes around the country authenticating such cars. And 
is uh, known around the collector car hobby as an expert on these high performance Chevys. And when we talk about the letters LS6 right there, what that simply refers to is the factory option code, and that stood for the 454 cubic inch, 450 horsepower engine that you could order with this 1970 Chevelle. Just a bunch of letters that pass into automotive history. Great job, $140,000. We'll have some fun with that. Love that blue. Now, the next car is one that Tyler Hoover previewed for us earlier. It's a 1958 Corvette Custom Convertible. 1958, very popular year. This particular Barrett Jackson auction. I think I counted, there's 14 1958 Corvettes, most of which have been modified, customized, resto modded. There's something about this year. Who knows whether it's the front, the way that looks, or whether it's this, the way they've designed the back end. All together, this particular year with these quad headlights up front seems to be getting a lot of the builder's attention this year. The 58 had a couple of one-year styling cues, including these fake louvers on the hood that we called a washboard. You can see why. The uh, tusks that would have been on the trunk are no longer present here. There's been a lot of upgrading, some brand new analog gauges here. Aftermarket steering wheel. Well, here we are at $80,000. Yeah, and underneath the hood, we've got a brand new LS3 6.2 liter engine that's now good for 430 horsepower. So significantly more than they were pumping out back in their day. Full resto mod, this would have had drum brakes all the way around with 15 inch diameter steel wheels. Uh, these are larger forged wheels and four wheel disc brakes have been added to improve its performance capability. Yeah, we've got a six-speed manual transmission. I love the work they've done in there with the plate. Not a uh, gate shifter, but it, it's got this wonderful plate that says Corvette surrounding that four-speed, the six-speed, pardon me. Sold at $120,000. Congratulations. Now coming up, here's a very special car. It's a 1951 Mercury with an engine out of a 1949 Cadillac. Uh, lots of other mechanical bits, but here's the key. It was customized for a country music legend. We'll tell you who it was in a moment. Welcome back to Scottsdale, the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. You know, at each auction during our broadcast, we like to pick one particular year to look at the interesting cars that or trucks that came out that year. And the year we've chosen for this auction, 1971. Why? Well, that was the beginning, the very first Barrett Jackson Car Show and Auction. What ruled the day? Well, it was all the pre-war classics. The muscle cars, well, they were out in the parking lot. But our Bob Varsha has found a car that, well, might have been out in that parking lot. In 1971, Ford introduced the third in its legendary series of Boss Mustangs. First, the Boss 302 that won the Trans Am. Then the Boss 429 that took Ford into supercar territory. And this was the third in that line, the Boss 351. And this is a beautiful example that will sell here at Barrett Jackson. Under the hood, of course, the R-Code 351 cubic inch Cleveland motor making 330 horsepower. Many of the original parts on this mill, though it has been massaged a little bit. Total redesign of the exterior in this beautiful green over green color combination. Inside, all sorts of options. Special dash, special gauge package, Hearst T-handle shifter, special steering wheel, high bucket seats, console, fold down rear seat, the whole lot. This is one of three in 1971 sold in this color combination. This is one really cool car. And in fact, that Boss 351 that Bob just showed you is out of the staging lanes. It'll be up on the block in just a moment. I think that's gonna be our third Boss 351 from 1971 that we'll see crossing the block today. Up in the block right now, we got a 1965 Superformance Mark III Custom Roadster. Well, you know it as a Cobra, a Cobra replica. Well, that's what it looks like now. Replica of the 427. I learned this from my son, Scott, today, who visited a well-known 
Ford Performance Car Collection today. Is this a 289 comp or a 427? If it was a 289, the gas filler would be centrally located on the 427. It's here on the right fender. I love the aircraft style gauges on this one and the World War II bomber seats. Well, that's the great thing about these Cobra replicas. I mean, there have been so many of them made, and people do them to their own taste and their own style, and they can kind of go, what if? What if this is what they had done back in those days? You know, and realizing, of course, by the time they got to the 427 Cobra, well, you know, it had been massively changed from that original AC Ace that became the original Cobra with a 260 engine. Here's the number 809 to 1949 Ford F1 custom pickup. Ladies and gentlemen, Nicely bought at $115,000. Now let's go to April once again. And with a 1969 Corvette. Now, this one is all original. It's never been customized or modified, except it does look like it has a repaint. And I love the look on the C3. You got this leading edge just cutting through the wind as you're going. Pop-up headlights, of course, the Chevy cross flags right up there. And this Stingray body with the pronounced fenders, Stingray call out right above these really cool gills on the side. Inset door handles and the hips just keep going you could spot this body style from miles away now this one has the l71 435 horsepower turbojet 427 v8 m21 four speed transmission and it comes with the original hard top and the convertible soft top is stored in the back it's just so cool to see what these looked like when they were born there's so many being modified and customized it's nice to see how it rolled off the assembly line bob Indeed it is, April. Thanks very much. Right now we're at 75, well, an adjustment to $73,000 bid on this 49 Ford F1 custom pickup. Beautiful orange metallic on the build on this F1. And I like what they've done in the interior, not just with the brown leather, but uh, the beautiful sculpting of the panels. But the dash is a matte version of the exterior color uh, with brand new gauges, uh, tilt wheel and all. Very sharp. Second year for this design from Ford, the bonus built era started in 1948. And while you were in that cab, the really significant thing and what we appreciate today is they actually expanded it significantly. It was a much bigger cab in 1949 than it was in 1948. Sunburst orange pearl is the color and it wears it well. $83,000 takes that beauty. You're instantly popular in your row when you win. Now a look into the Maguire's staging lanes. The crew hard at work shining up these beauties before they come under the hot TV lights. Look at people everywhere, cars everywhere. Eric Jackson is definitely shifting into overdrive. And we've still got Friday and Saturday, 19 hours of coverage. Stay with us. It's going to be great. Here's a 1949 Chevy 3100 custom pickup. Well, it's got an LS engine, a 5.3 liter, but they have put old Chevy small block valve covers and decals on it to make it look uh, look old, but it's not. It's brand new. And, of course, it's uh, fuel injected as well. This thing is dropped and lowered. What a great build. Yeah, underneath it's got a C4 Corvette suspension. Now just a moment ago we saw the 1949 customized Ford truck that rolled across. Well this would have been its competition that same year from 1949. So the C4 would have been the early to mid 1990s and of course you get four wheel disc brakes. You get four wheel independent suspension with a transverse rear leaf spring. A lot of modernization going on here. It's a shame it's not all in full view but most of it's underneath. As we often talk about, when you paint a car or a truck black, you're going to show every flaw. If there's something wrong going down the side, you're going to see it. And as we look down the side of this, boy, I don't see anything that's wrong. There is one fun thing up here at the very front. It's got a, a little faux license plate that says Wichita Air Capital. And our own Tyler Hoover knows exactly what they're talking about because there were so many aircraft companies based out of Wichita over the years. And it got to $100,000. Wow. A knowing glance from the bidder to his buddy. 
that maybe rolls away. <laughs> okay, it's Corvette time again. This is a 66 custom convertible. So not the Stinger hood, but this was the big block hood that you got for 65 and 66. And underneath, well, not a 396, not anymore. Same block, same engine family, but the 454 is what's here, made it to a four-speed manual. Custom blue metallic paint, not exactly a Corvette shade. Yeah, I love those Riddler wheels, disc brakes front and rear. It's got the uh, the side pipes that I think, as we mentioned earlier, if it was a factory version, would have been a $130 option. Coming all the way to the back, you know, it's interesting that they've chosen to put on the luggage rack on the back. Kind of a bit of fun in terms of doing something a little different. It's not just that sleek look. Because remember, you had no actual trunk right here. No, you had a little storage space behind the seats. All right, you got the luggage rack, you got all the suitcases, everything on here, everything all strapped on, and then you realize you're low on gas. Take it all off. Side pipes, which were optional, uh, not available in Connecticut and other states where the fun police uh, would get involved. They, Connecticut law said the exhaust had to exit behind the rear wheels. They were just no fun, were they? Well, for what it's worth, at least it has the, uh, you know, the, the things that cover that. So you're, when you're stepping out, you're not stepping directly onto the exhaust pipe. you got to imagine the lawyers were involved, along with the stylists and engineers, uh, on that one. But you're right. That perforated cover on the exhaust pipes is that is heat shielding uh, to protect uh, ankles and shins. Go easy on my professional brethren. Hey, $58,000. It's like a breath of fresh air, given the numbers we've been seeing. That'll take your breath away. And there's plenty more to come. Here's a car we previewed earlier. And yeah, I know they gave away the joke when they put the name of the country star on the graphic. It's a 51 Mercury custom convertible owned by Buck Owens. Well, not only in, in Nashville is too much never enough uh, in Las Vegas, but it is in Nashville, too. If you're a country star, you're going to commission your own special custom, and that's what they did here. Isn't this a beauty? Four one-barrel carburetors, Offenhauser dress-up kit underneath. Gosh, I love period speed equipment, and this is it at its best. A lead sled merc. Boy, it, it just is a great throwback in terms of the way it was done. And I don't think this is an actual convertible top. I think this is a Carson top. Or, yeah, I believe it's a Carson top that comes up. Now, come to the back and look at all the memorabilia that they've got here. Yeah, Buck Owens jacket. We got Buck Owens records. We got magazines. We got buttons from the Grand Old Opry. In addition to getting a pretty cool car, you're also getting a great collection of memorabilia from one of the great country and western stars. And if we can come back up under hood, this is very rare equipment. These are Edmunds air cleaners atop these one barrel carburetors and a horn intake manifold. Never have I ever at Barrett Jackson seen a setup like this. Well, first off, the most important thing you said was a one barrel carburetor. I mean, we're so used to seeing, you know, we think of a two barrel carburetor as being the small one, but a one barrel carburetor with four of them. I love this bill with the lake pipes out the side. Full fender skirts, Lincoln-esque taillights. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous build. Well, I mean, if you're going to be a one-of-a-kind country star, you need a one-of-a-kind car, and here it is. Yeah, this would definitely get attention when you pulled up wherever you pulled up, because this, I mean, the combination of the color, the look, everything about this. $50,000. Folks in Nashville are probably shaking their heads. Had it paid a good bit more than that, they're saying. I'm not saying they are. One way or another, very, very cool car. Thinking of my favorite Hee Haw shows right now. Don't forget, Barrett-Jackson.com is the place to go for every factoid about the Barrett-Jackson auctions. So check it out, Barrett-Jackson.com. Here comes a 69 Camaro RSSS Indianapolis 500 pace car. 
the first of only two times that orange stripes were used on the Camaro. They were used on the 30th anniversary replica of this, the 69 Indy Pace Car. Uh, the Z11 with RS hideaway headlights, with SS equipment, five-year nut and bolt restoration, 396 inches, 325 horse, wide ratio Muncie, and the houndstooth orange interior. Now, these were built, we call this the Pace Car Edition, a replica of the Pace Car that was built for sale by Chevrolet dealers. They could order them and sell them, and you could watch the uh, annual 500-mile race and just feel like you were pacing the field. Well, they had pace cars, which were actually on the track. They had parade cars, which were used in the parade the, right before the Indy 500, or they had the pace car editions. They made about 3,600 of these. And so as a result, and there's some, you didn't necessarily have to have the uh, stickers on the outside. Sometimes were, those were put in the trunk and applied by the dealer. And of course, 1969 is a very important year for the Indy 500, because that's the year Mario Andretti won. Very rare car here, only about 20% of these were big blocks and a small percentage of those, like this one, had four speeds. $110,000. Did you mention they gave out a bunch of them to uh, key journalists as well? Of course, you had to give them back, but it was fun to drive them for the month of May. Okay, and here's one close to my heart. I talked about it earlier in our spotlight feature. This is a 1971 Mustang Boss 351. Well, Chevrolet had one up Ford in 1970, taking their Z28 to 350 inches, while Ford's Boss was still the 302. For here was Ford's response one year later. Yeah, everything was getting bigger in the Mustang world. I mean, it was only going to be around for a couple more years in terms of the full-sized, or what we consider a full-size Mustang, before the Mustang II came along in 1974. The Boss 302 went away, the Boss 9 went away, and the Boss 351 was the big dog. Now, note the hood scoops on this. They are pretty special. We call them NACA ducks, N-A-C-A was the National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics. And that shape of intake was how, on a fighter plane engine, you could get cooling air in from a flat surface without disturbing the airflow. Take this flat surface and have this type of shape. Uh, NACA morphed into NASA, the National Aeronautic and Space Administration. So a little space tech, the aerospace technology right here on these Mustangs. And that would make Ford very proud, Mike. Great buy on that cart, 75 grand. Another break coming up, but as you can see, plenty of terrific hardware coming your way. We lead up to the big weekend events here at Barrett Jackson. So many great things to see and do here at Barrett Jackson, but it's not just the cars. There are literally hundreds of vendors and manufacturers catering to the car lover like Blueprint Engines. Kel Bridges is with them. Why do you guys want to be here at Barrett Jackson? So the reason we're here is we specialize in a performance crate engine. So we're at Blueprint Engines. We are the authority in crate engines, and we build a complete package for these older vehicles. So brand new block, brand new heads, complete engine, front drive, transmission. If you're going with an LS or a Hemi, we'll even provide the wiring harness and the correct tune. All ready to go, crate out of the box. Correct, all ran and tested on the dyno and with a 30 month, 50,000 mile warranty. Cool, I'm gonna go look at all these things. Welcome back under the big top. As we continue, here's what the last three cars did as they crossed the block and notice 8.2, uh, 8.1, 2.1, the 2024 Shelby GT50 that April introduced us to earlier, sold for over $130,000, and a 64 Chevy Impala SS409 went for $140,000. So you get the idea. It's tall cotton time here at Barrett Jackson. Here's a 2023 Ford Bronco Raptor. We're currently at $83,000. Yeah, the Raptor name, I think Ford started using it back in 2010 to denote their high-performance versions. This is a brand-new, and I mean brand-new, Raptor from 2023. It's got less than 35 miles on it, and look, it still has all the dealer tape on it to protect certain things. And $84,000 wins it. Now... Our next car will be out there around the exit ramp. 
Where that Bronco just went. It's a 2016 Escalade, Cadillac Escalade, custom ESV B6 Armament Level 3. I'm not sure what size armor-piercing shell this would repel, but I would imagine, Rick, it's pretty big. Well, actually, it's the next level up that pr pr you know, protects you from armor piercing, but this one will do pretty solid. I mean, it's the B6 armament level B+. Plus. B6 means it can withstand high-powered rifle shots. Now, the next level up is what you're talking about, B7, for armor piercing. But, I mean, this is, if you want to protect somebody, this is going to do the job. Well, it's a shame there's a need for vehicles like this, but certain high net worth, high profile individuals, government officials, politicians could certainly benefit. And the car does not appear all that different from stock, at least not from the outside. Ah, but take a look on the inside. I mean, yeah, whoever you're protecting, they must be important. So you got to give them all the creature comforts that you can imagine. I had lunch at a fancy restaurant in Atlanta recently, and in the door came Arthur Blank, owner of the Atlanta Falcons, and a whole lot more. I finished my meal, went outside, and there was one of those parked outside with Falcons 1 on the license plate. So they do have a need. Okay, we're already at 20 grand on the next car. It's a 2014 Bentley Continental Flying Spur. Well, we saw the convertible version of this, and here is the four-door with a stretch wheelbase. Recently serviced at Roger Penske's Bentley dealership here uh, in Scottsdale. 18,000 miles on the clock. It is beluga inside and out. And yes, even though the whale was white, the caviar is black, and that's what gives the color its name. And it's important to talk about seven, the fact 47. that, you know, Bentley's history goes back so far. You know, they talk about the Bentley boys. The Bentley boys won consecutive Le Mans over several years. And as a result, they established Bentley as a performance mark. And then as time went along, it ultimately was owned by Rolls-Royce. And there was a time when it was simply a rebadged Rolls-Royce. And then it got new ownership. And in that new ownership, well, when Volkswagen owned it, they decided to go all in in performance. In fact, Bentley went back to Le Mans, was able to win, and they put that performance into their cars, both in styling from the GT Continental as well as the Flying Spur. Yeah, it just looks fast sitting here. And more importantly, it's got more than 500 horsepower. At 61,000. 61,000 takes it. Not a bad buy, I'd say. Here's a little program note. Be sure to catch SEMA Battle of the Builders 2023. It'll be coming your way on the History Channel this Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And then stick around at 2 p.m. on FYI. More live coverage from here at Barrett Jackson. Switching over to History Channel at 6 p.m. that evening. Like to see you there. Here's a 72 Porsche 911 Targa. Some people come to Barrett Jackson for just one car, and I know several who have that interest in this. A 1972 Porsche 911 Targa. Targa is short for Targa Florio, the great race around the island in Italy, and it's memorialized here. That stainless steel basket handle uh, is somewhat of a roll bar, and early Targas had a liftoff center roof panel and a soft vinyl rear window. Here, the rear window is glass. Uh, it has a defroster grid in it, but the center part of the roof lifts off, giving you convenience of a convertible and the safety and security of an enclosed car. 1972, the engine got an upgrade. They bumped it up to 190 horsepower. And you have to remember back then, you know, in a car this light with this short a wheelbase, that was pretty solid power. They only built about, I think, less than 13,000 Porsches back in 1972. You know, we think so many of them around, but it was really a small volume manufacturer for a very long time. Forged Fuchs five-spoke wheels, synonymous with Porsche. Sometimes body color, sometimes black in the center with the chrome rims. And this is the 911T version. There was the T, the E, and the 911S was the top performer. 
And remember, this was the first decade of the 9-11, which had preceded you know, the, uh, the previous version. You know, when that, when that new body came along, who would have thought decades later we'd still essentially be using the same design, the same concept for the cars rolling off the showroom floor today? Fun fact, the lug nuts on these, or wheel bolts, are titanium, and they are extremely lightweight to reduce rotating mass and unsprung weight. Five round gauges in the dash, the same on today's 911. The ignition key is to the left of the steering column, the same on today's 911. Some traditions are just worth hanging on to, and that's a couple of them. The uh, gauges on a new 911 are electronic. It's a glass panel, except for the tachometer, which is still analog. $100,000. I think the auctioneer was thinking about cutting it short at 75. We got the extra 25 from those gentlemen. Well done. Once again, here's Tyler. Smokey and the Bandit starring Burt Reynolds, Sally Field, and Jerry Reed singing Eastbound and Down, debuted in 1977, was the second highest grossing film of the year behind Star Wars. And what you see right here is very close to that movie car with one key difference. I want to see if you can spot it as we go through it. So this is a 1977 Pontiac Trans Am Special Edition in black, just like the movie car. And the Special Edition package, you can see the gold cat eyes here, the pinstriping very correct to the movie car. The gold snowflake wheels also correct, and the Greek Trans Am lettering very correct. You go inside and you can see, yes, it has the leather interior, the leatherette, much like the movie, and it even has the CB radio. But do you spot the big difference? Well, it's up high. Burt Reynolds had a T-top for his hat to fly out, and Sally Field to throw out her uh, wedding bonnet. This one, no T-tops. And if you're looking for bonus points, well, it's also missing its CB radio antenna on the back, but otherwise very close to the movie car, and this one in great shape. Thank you, Tyler. Right now, we're at lot 815, a 2015 Aston Martin DB9 Volante convertible. Beautiful car, two plus two, white over black. Note the headrest fairings here at the rear seat and the pop-up roll bars if needed. Beautiful V12 Touring Cabriolet. And they, somebody up there got it. That's a lot of joy. Congratulations to them. Another break coming up, and we'll be back with more from Scottsdale. And we are hammering here on Thursday night at Westworld of Scottsdale at the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auctions. Just hammered away was that 2016 Cadillac CTSV Custom Sedan. Beautiful shade of candy apple red. Now here comes a 2016 Corvette Z06 3LZ convertible. Well, a convertible on the block and a coupe right behind it. So the 3LZ was the top trim level on the Z06. It gets a 6.2 liter LT4 supercharged engine. This one with an eight-speed automatic transmission. Arctic white over adrenaline red. And the Z07 super performance package added on to Z06. This one with less than 2,000 miles. Yeah, this generation of Corvette was really a milestone in terms of moving forward. You know, I talk about the C5, where they reduced the number of parts from the C4. They reduced it by 1,800 just to make it everything so it would rattle less. 
going from the C6 to the C7, there are literally only two parts that carry over from the C6 to the C7. Everything else was brand new on this. And then realized they went to the C8 and went in a completely different direction again. Great performing road cars, a little temperamental on the track for a track day use. But here the convertible is $84,000. Uh, the coupe that comes up right behind it with a little more of a competition vibe. And we'll see if it beats the convertible in terms of hammer price. It hammers away for 84 grand. You might call that a modern collectible. Collectors always want to know what the future hot cars will be. Well, here's Rick DeBrule with more on the subject. So what makes a car collectible? Well, I like to think it's four things. It's looks, performance, history, and most of all, desirability. Which is why when I think about future collectibles, I think about this 2024 Mustang Dark Horse. With 500 horsepower, it's not the ultimate Mustang performance car, but it's obtainable. Throw on the Dark Horse appearance package, you've got even more style that adds to desirability. If you're thinking about future Chrysler collectibles, well, the name Hellcat has to be near the top of the list. Starting out at more than 700 horsepower, doesn't matter if it's in a Challenger, a Charger, or any Chrysler product, anything that says Hellcat is going to be sought after for a long time. Now, there was a time when Cadillac focused purely on luxury. But with its return to Le Mans more than 20 years ago, the company realized that modern, upscale buyers want performance as well. That's why this Cadillac Blackwing is a future collectible. 6.2 liter Blackwing engine with 668 horsepower. Finally, let's go smaller and a little older with the Honda S2000. From the year 2000 to 2009, the S2000 was the hot ticket. Two liter engine with a lightweight performance car had a high power to weight ratio. Collectible today? Yes. Collectible in the future? Absolutely. Well, we've already seen some of those cars sell here at Barrett Jackson, so they must be collectible. Lot here uh, is lot 817. Mike talked about it earlier. It's the group version of the Chevy Z06. Yeah, Z06 with the Z07 performance option and carbon fiber. Corvette Jake and kind of the ghost graphic there on the hood is the one difference between the two. The convertible hammered sold at 82,000. And as Rick has said, when the top goes down, the price goes up. So here's the coupe at $67,000, a $15,000 discount to the convertible that preceded it. We move on to lot 817.1 and 1957 Chevy Nomad Custom Wagon. Yeah, underneath the hood, a 5.7 liter fuel injected engine, a lot different than what it was born with, but you know, it's not one of those modern crate engines that have that, that you know, the plenum where you can see they've got a, kind of an old school build on this, which I really like. Black on the bottom, white on top. It's got a great look for a 1957. The Nomad began as a GM Motorama dream car displayed in the Waldorf Astoria in New York. It was built on a 53 Corvette, and everybody loved it so much, they took the door and roof treatment from the Nomad show car, two-door hardtop, ribs in the roof, wrap around in the back, the tusks or spears along the tailgate, and they put it on the full-size Chevy for 55, six, and seven. These are very highly prized, and we're on our way to six figures. And we've seen more than a few of the tribute to the Motorama cars come to the block, where they've got that Corvette front end, that lower top, and the uh, flying brake look. They're fun to see, you know, what it looks like when people kind of come up with those concepts. You know, it's interesting, this is a 57. 57s are more complicated to restore than in 1956. And by the way, you said six figures, we're there. Wow, I don't know what team he plays for. I want to see him get in and out of that Nomad. $105,000 as the Summit Racing sold sticker goes on. The price is listed. It has a new owner. Very cool. Now here's a 69 Corvette 427 435, said to be a convertible. 
And Roy Sinor, Barrett Jackson's Corvette Export, is going to speak about it. If you're here to buy a C269 435, pay attention. This is the car to own at this auction. It's an L71 435. It's an original unrestored car. It's had some paintwork, but it's a spectacular car. It's got a tank sheet. It's got great owner history, and it belongs to one of the best families in the hobby. And Roy Sinar is a world-renowned Corvette expert, so when Roy tells you that, it's absolutely the way it is. So buy it with confidence. Incredible car. Let's go, Trey. Well, note that on these cars, they got their own big block hood, not the Stinger, uh, but you notice the shape of these gills, and that could have been the tail and the shape of a Stingray carrying over here into the C3, which began in 1968. 427, 435, hard top. This is the liftoff hard top. There's also a fold up soft top on this one. What's so interesting about this is that it is original, according to Roy Siner. Yeah, the, some of the paintwork has been done, but underneath, this is a survivor car. And as we often say, it's only original once to be able to buy a car that is still similar to the way it came off the assembly line is very impressive. Now, the factory paint wasn't perfect. We see a few little dots here. We see a run here. You know, that's the way they came off the assembly line. So. That's pretty, uh, just pretty authentic. This is a big block four speed car. So uh, if you're a performance enthusiast driver, this is the one you want. Once upon a time, the C3 just couldn't command the money. And then suddenly when well, somebody woke up one day and went, wait a minute, they've got big blocks, they've got looks. We need to pay more for these. I remember the first time we saw these crossed in the six figures, it was like, wait a minute, things have changed. Uh, this, does, this is not the latch for the trunk because there is no opening trunk. The key that goes in there activates the security alarm. That's a factory option. And underneath, while it's a brand new body style that came out in 1968, underneath it's very similar in terms of chassis and suspension to the 1967 and those mid-year Corvettes. 86,000 takes it. I said it was said to be a convertible. It comes with both the hard and soft tops. Nicely done. Very interesting Corvette. Now here's a here's a car that's coming up. Lot 823.1 is a 1971 Dodge Challenger RT. V code 446 pack Challenger, one of 250 produced in 1971. You see it up close. I'm at the Ram TRX Thrill Ride, about to get some big air in this big red truck. Nick, I know these have over 700 horsepower, but the suspension's pretty trick too, right? That's right, Tyler. Bilstein shocks all the way around. We actually have jump detection in the shock system that allows us to, once we're off the ground, land smoothly. Let me show you what we can do. Awesome, let's roll. Get lined up to the trust here. First jump, whoa! We get up on about 30 degrees of banking here. And it doesn't roll. Does it roll? That's the ground. Pick up the speed again. All right. Here comes another one. Whoa! Wow! Yeah, Baja mode all the way around. Stiffens up that suspension for the nice landing there. Man, I think I sprouted a few new hairs on my chest. America! And Tyler, you guys got to wear helmets if you're going to do that kind of stunt jumping. Very cool truck, though. Here's what the last three cars across the block did. Lot 818.1. Chevy C10 Super Shine Custom Pickup went for $150,000, and a K10 Custom for a hundred grand. That's just kind of where we're at right now. So here's a 1970 Ford Bronco custom SUV. We're at 40 grand and counting. Well, according to the consigner, they have $100,000 in receipts associated with the build on this thing. Now, what's interesting about the current Bronco craze is over the last couple years, we've seen both the very stock Broncos and the very custom Broncos coming to the block. And it seems like more and more we're seeing fewer and fewer of the restored stock style Broncos and more and more of the customs. And that's exactly what we have here. 347 cubic inch stroker V8 four speed automatic transmission. Custom five four by four. Wheel wells has been cut out, suspension has been jacked up, solid lift. 
Well, if you can rest him on a 70s Chevelle, why not rest him on a first-generation Bronco? People want the look and they want the fun of that original first-generation build, but they want it to drive like a modern SUV. So here you go. And we've talked about the fact there's some restorers who, who restore to better than new, and what I think has been happening in the Bronco world is they're discovering that the people who are buying these want it better than new. Well, there it goes at $81,000. And let's go to April Rose. You never know who you're going to run into here at Barrett Jackson. Celebrities all over the place. Danny, <laughs> there's one right here. Danny Coker, Counts Customs. You build some epic rides. I absolutely love your show. Now, we're standing by one of yours yes. that you don't really want to get rid of. I don't. I don't. She is a beautiful, beautiful 64 Galaxy that uh, we built this car on Counting Cars. I, I believe it was season two. Uh, this car is gorgeous, rust-free, desert example, nut and bolt, frame-off restoration, nasty big block Ford. Uh, the car, the only problem with this car is it has an attitude problem. It is so wicked nasty. Everything about it is correct. Old school proper. You can't keep them all. So therefore, I'm here at Barrett Jackson. Somebody's going home with an absolute gem here tonight. Now this is really, really incredible. How long did this build take? This build probably took us, I'm guessing, about eight months uh, back in the day, and it was all hands on deck. So there's a whole lot of work in this car, front to back, top to bottom. There's no disappointments. Whoever takes this car home is going to be really happy. Right. And you build so many cars. Yeah. How do you find donor cars, and how do you come up with the, all these ideas? Because this is out of this world. Well, this one came from a desert. I was driving around in in, uh, in Nevada, and this was sitting out in a desert. So it, it had been in the desert forever. It was a very dry car, really straight, really proper. Picked it up, started from there. Um, but the ideas is only because it's my entire life. I have lived and breathed cars ever since I can remember. And uh, this car, while it has a lot of custom touches, it also pays monster respect to what the factory designers wanted out of it. So I just like to enhance on a vehicle like this. I like I like to enhance what's already there and make it cooler. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all in this crazy skull of mine. Right? And you're going to be really sad to watch it sell tonight. I am. It's, it's a double. It's a double thing. I'll be sad to see it go, but I'll be so happy for whoever takes it home because they're going to be really happy. Well, thanks for stopping by with us. We're going to watch it sell in just a few moments. And hey, good luck to your Lions this weekend. Thank you so much. That's right. Go Lions. Come on. Woo. Bob, back to you. All right. Thank you, April and Dan. Here's our first, I think. No, it isn't actually. Uh, 2021 Tesla Model S Plaid Custom Sedan. Where'd the plaid name come from? Wasn't there a saying something like, let's paint the town plaid? In other words, let's do something totally outrageous that's never been done before. And that's what Tesla did with this, just with the plaid. And then this one's been customized. It has a lot of carbon fiber accents uh, inside out at the rear spoiler, the dive planes here. Doesn't look like any Tesla I've ever seen. Well, it'll do zero to 60 in 1.99 seconds. Less than two seconds, you can get to zero to 60. That's part of the customization package. You know, I think back to when the first Tesla Roadster came out, remember, based on the Lotus? We thought, ah, come on, how much performance can you get out of an electric motor? Well, having covered the FIA Formula E World Championship, I can tell you, you can get a lot. Those cars are fun. As is this one, and it sells for $100,000. So let's move on. 1977 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am SE. Well, as we heard from Tyler, this is known as the Smokey and the Bandit treatment, but the car preceded the movie. Uh, these were already in production and already in Pontiac dealers when uh, Hal Needham and Burt Reynolds put together their wonderful Smokey and the Bandit movie. Still, these are great performance cars on their own, with or without uh, the black with custom gold tape, pinstripes, gold dash, and gold honeycomb wheels. 
Yeah, the body changed up front from 1976 to 1977. 1976 still had the round headlights, and there are those who swear that's the only way you should go. It went to the rectangular headlights in 1977. Personally, I'm a big fan of this look, and just a couple years later, they got rid of the grill style and had the individual headlights. But it's an evolution in terms of the style and the way it changed over time. It, and this, once again, is the one, because it was so iconic, the look from the movie is the one so many people love. I'm not sure if it's a factory option on this car. They did offer it on some GM cars, but there's the CB radio sitting there right in front of the shifter between the dash and the console. Is there a generation of people we have to explain what a CB well, radio yeah. is? Yeah, CB stood for Citizens Band, and it was so everybody could have their own radio. You were supposed to get an FCC call sign for yours. I think mine was 1W1814, Unit 1, Breaker Breaker. Well, that just rolls right off the list. Uh, why not, you know? But uh, obviously the truckers, uh, songs like uh, C.W. McCall's Convoy, was all about the use of CB radio by truckers to avoid smoking. Now you just put Waze on your cell phone, and uh, that'll do pretty much the same thing uh, without all the jabber jaw. And it is well bought. I was afraid we were going to have to explain who Burt Reynolds and Sally Field and Jerry Reed and Jackie Gleason were. Okay. Stay on the stage with a 1969 Shelby GT500. Well, we see so many 1967, 68, 65, 66 clones of Shelby's because they're you know, so easy to take the parts and make a new one. Not so with the 1969. This is real. If you want to do a clone of these, it's a lot of work. And the reason being is you look at the way this entire front end is extended with the NACA ducts right here, this, the complicated hood, the big scoop on the side. Eh, this is not an easy one to replicate. As a result, you don't see a lot of replicas, which makes this special. Technically, this was a two-year body, but in reality, it was a one-year build. This didn't sell that well. They had a bunch left over, and they had to rebadge them as 1970s. Yeah, unlike early Shelby Mustangs, this was no tape stripe special, tape stripe and add scoops special. It was a real attempt to restyle uh, the Mustang. And yes, those are authentic NACA ducks in the hood. And I should have said those ducks were made so that you could intake air from a flat surface without increasing drag in the airflow. And that's what they did. And part of the problem for the Shelby this year was the fact that the Mach 1 was doing so well. You could get Mustang performance straight from Ford at a slightly lower price. Why did I have to pay extra for a Shelby GT350 or 500? Wow, $100,000. And let's go to Tyler. I'm with lot 632.1, a 1972 Chevrolet Chevelle custom coupe and with the blueprint engine cam let's take a look under the hood we have a 632 cubic inch v8 hand built by blueprint motors they dyno tested it at the end over 815 horsepower so the ls6 chevelle 454 went out in 1971 a year before this didn't have a fraction of the power huge upgrade beautiful raven black exterior black vinyl top and black interior this one's coming to the block soon all right thank you very much tyler we got another break coming up as we are just past the bottom of the hour in our fifth of six hours here at barrett jackson scottsdale Back at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale over in the Showcase Pavilion, one of our cameras has found a new use for the famed shaker hood on the Cudas. And I love it in yellow. We are still in our fifth of six hours here on FYI at the world's greatest collector car auction. But as you can see, plenty of rolling stock still to come tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday. Don't miss a minute. Let's go to the stage now. 2019 Corvette Z06 Custom. Yeah, this is a Hennessy HPE 850, 850 horsepower on top of this Z06. We're at $72,000. That's a fraction of what this cost to build. Wow, no question about that. And 72,000 is the final number. <laughs> 
happy group, rightfully so. Next up, lot 823.1. We showed it to you earlier. It's a 71 Dodge Challenger RT. Well, second year of the Challenger, second year of the E body, and boy, you know, the value of these cars tends to step down from 1970, 71, 72, 73. But honestly, I, you're not losing anything in this one. It's perfect. I mean, it's 440, six back. It's got the three two-barrel carburetors under there. It's one of 129 that has a factory four-speed manual transmission. Still has its original fender tag. This is a great car to buy. Yeah, here's the fender tag, and this indicates all of the equipment codes, usually a three character uh, for the paint, the interior, the engine, the transmission, everything, so you know how it was born with. Now, calling that carburetor setup, those three deuces, a six pack. You think Dodge Plymouth really knew what they were doing when they did that? Yeah, they absolutely. did. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love the B5 blue color, and as often on these Mopars, inside and out. In yesterday's coverage, Rick showed us the cosmetic differences between the Challenger and the Cuda. But the biggest mechanical difference between the two? The Challenger's wheelbase is two inches longer than the Cuda. And you know where most of that two inches went? In the back seat. You got a little more leg room in the back seat. Big money for that car. But that's where we are here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. And the next car up is the one its creator, Danny Coker, told April all about earlier. It's a 64 Ford Galaxy 500 XL Custom. I love this. I love the bubble on the hood with the air intake at the back because that's how they did it on the Ford factory drag cars. Look just how gorgeous this thing uh, is under hood. Now, we heard from Danny Coker a little bit ago. April interviewed him, but now he's going to talk to the crowd about this beautiful galaxy. All right, here's the count. Hey everybody, how you guys doing out there? Let's hear from Barrett Jackson. Come on. Amen. I just got to get this off my chest. God bless our troops. God bless our veterans. God bless our first responders. God bless Barrett Jackson for standing behind these cats all the time. Had to get that off my chest. All right. Now, I brought down my 64 Galaxy 500. We built this car in County Cars. It's a personal car of mine. It's absolutely delicious from front to back, top to bottom. Big block, nasty Ford. Only problem with this car is it's got an attitude problem. Enjoy. Take it home. Have fun. God bless you guys. God bless Bear Jackson. Well, delicious is a word we don't often use to describe cars here. But I love the way, again, this car does not have not a speck of chrome on it once you close the hood. Everything is done in this kind of flat silver gray. All that Galaxy 500 XL trim down the side has all been reimagined. It's a tribute to the lightweight galaxies, which were designed to be drag races, but in reality, they were too heavy. That's ultimately what led to the Thunderbolt, because you could use the mid-size, the fairlane size, and it was just a little bit smaller. Wasn't a huge success as a drag racer, but as a tribute car, boy, this is really done nice, and this is done better than any 1964 Galaxy ever would have looked. Six figures, there we are. Wow. 100,000, another 100,000. And we all remember our late colleague, Alan Decadene, who used to use the word delicious for a nice car, lump for an engine, gear bag for a transmission, but he was British. Now let's take a peek into the Meguiar's staging lanes. As the night goes on, fire pots burning, Adult beverages all around and plenty of dream rides still making their way to the launching point that is the Barrick Jackson auction stage and they'll find new homes over the next couple of days. Here's a 1939 Ford custom convertible big custom. You know this reminds me of a very famous Lincoln Zephyr that crossed the block here oh 15 years ago called Scrape. 
uh, because that's what that front end was doing. And this one is lowered, not quite to the same level, uh, but but very close to it. There's a Z06 badge on the side of the hood, and that probably indicates what lies beneath. Well, it is an intriguing mix. It's a Ford body. It's got a uh, Chevy product in terms of a crate engine under the hood. But it has Mustang 2 front suspension, which is very classic for a lot of hot rods. So, you know, that's the truth. In reality, most hot rods were built that way. It was a little mix of this and that. What I love up front is the treatment they've done with the grill. Slightly changed. I love this little indent right here. Beautiful style. $50,000. Well, you got room in your garage? You'll be the most popular guy in your neighborhood on big holidays, parades and whatnot. Now the next car comes from one of the many fine collections that we see here at Barrett Jackson all the time. This particular collection, Tim Whitehead. Here's Steve Davis. Buy it with confidence. We had this at our showroom in uh, Scottsdale. We've been getting it ready for the auction and it means a whole lot to him and a whole lot to us. This car is here and someone's gonna get a fantastic addition to your collection. Well, in this one, the chrome and the stainless are kind of sparse, but boy, do they offset that deep ruby uh, paint. Now, this has a Mercury flathead engine, a 1953, but a modern Tremec 5-speed, three Stromberg 97 carburetors. Wish the Cliff, can we open this one? This, that's got to be gorgeous inside with those uh, uh, flathead V8 with triple carbs. What do you think? I might need a little rotation there on the latch. Oh, sorry. Wish we could show it to you. Uh, the interior, some some great brown leather. There we go. This looks like Connolly leather and Wilton carpet edged in leather. Very British uh, treatment treatment there. And to your point, Mike, what you were talking about a moment ago, I love the fact that they put a Mercury engine, you know, vintage that they built up. They didn't just stick another crate engine. They didn't, which is what everybody does. And don't get me wrong, it's easy to do. And you can appreciate it. It's great modern performance. Not a lot of engine rebuilders left out there, so it's great when somebody does that. $55,000 takes it. And I sure would take it. Another break coming up. About 15 minutes before the end of our fifth hour. Great cars still to come, so stick and stay. The Barrett Jackson Cup, presented by Castrol, is back. On Saturday, nearly 50 vehicles paraded across the auction block to showcase the talent and craftsmanship of custom car and truck builders from across the country. Judges have narrowed this amazing collection of vehicles down to five finalists, from which the Barrett Jackson Cup winner will be chosen during our live Super Saturday coverage here on FYI. And here are the five finalists. First up, a 1968 Ford Mustang nicknamed Rampant. We also have a 1960 Buick Invicta Custom, a 1967 Chevy C10 Custom, a 1927 Ford Roadster, and finally, a 1959 Chevy Impala Custom. Good luck to all of the finalists. We're all looking forward to that. As we approach Friday and Saturday here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Right now on the block, 66 Chevy Corvette Convertible. We're at 63 grand. Yeah, the base 300 horsepower, 327 cubic inch in model. Love the color on this. Mosport green back in the days when they were naming them after racetracks. And it's a very subtle green. That's what I like about this. Beautiful car. A new base coat, clear coat paint, of course. Uh, the interior very nicely finished. In is that black or is it a midnight green? Whatever it is, it's gorgeous. 65,000 takes it. And the Summit Racing Sold sticker goes on to prove it. 65 grand takes it away. And that's because Barrett Jackson is an all no reserve auction. No minimum bid that must be reached. The top bid when the hammer falls gets the car. No questions asked. Now here's a 67 Buick GS 400 convertible. Well, Buick was trying to decide what they wanted to be. Did they want to be a luxury car builder, a performance car builder? It's kind of hard to do both. But their biggest competition 
was not Mercury or Dodge. Uh, it were the other GM divisions, Pontiac and Oldsmobile. So Pontiac had the GTO, Olds had the 442. Buick had to have their Grand Sport. Well, I think they ultimately also had to follow their audience. I mean, yes, Buick was the step below Cadillac. I mean, it was supposed to be a luxury car. But what they were discovering was the people who were buying their car wanted a little more. If I just wanted luxury, I'll go to Cadillac. I want something a little more. The, as you mentioned, the other divisions were coming up with horsepower. So that's exactly what Buick decided to do, coming up with the Grand Sport. Something that had a little more performance, a little more power, and a little more style. So this one in Burgundy missed with its 340 horsepower V8. Uh, the Grand Sport had far less styling callouts than the GTO, the SS396, or the 442. It was kind of a conservative muscle car, if you will, as befitting Buick's image. Well, it was in 1967. Give it a couple years, and boy, the styling would come up to everybody else's car. 50 grand. Strikes me as a pretty good price for that car. And while we're on the subject, here comes Another Buick, a 1987 Grand National. Well, this is from the era, era when Lloyd Royce was the head of Buick, and uh, he was all about performance. His son, Mark Royce, is now GM COO. Uh, he took Buick to Indy. Buick was in NASCAR, and you got that big huffer, exhaust-driven, turbo supercharger is what it is technically, and boy, that made all the difference made all the difference to the tune of 245 horsepower and today we just don't think of that as a lot but you got to remember this was 1987 we were just coming out of the Malaysia and think about this this had more horsepower than a Corvette did the same year that was a no-no in the General Motors world my daughter had a four-cylinder BMW a newer one that has more horsepower than this but you're right in its day this was the performance car to have and look at it with all the blackout trim that is all factory the wheels are chrome and the v6 buick emblem on this car uh, is designed to give you the idea of that turbocharger turning and forcing that air in the induction and here's a copy of the original sticker, and we can see that the price sold new was $17,942 out the door. And this finish has just enough orange peel for me to say, yep, this is factory paint. This is the way they came out of the plant, just like this. By the way, the most expensive option on this car that year was the Delco GM graphic equalizer stereo for $504. Bigger number for the second Buick, $3,000, and away it goes. Now we've got lots of great cars and lots of supercars coming, especially over the next couple of days. We'll be knee deep in them. So what exactly is the supercar? Here's Tyler Hoover. I'm in the supercar area of the salon trying to decide which country does the supercar thing the best. And it's not easy. I mean, you could say the Americans. Of course, they came back and won 50 years later at Le Mans with a racing version of this 2019 Ford GT. But then the British, well, they know what they're doing as well. Look at this beautiful 2022 765 LT, 750 horsepower out of the four liter V8. But let's continue around the world here. How about the Japanese with this 2012 Lexus LFA? Many people consider it to be the best sounding supercar of all time with that V10 coming out of the tri-tip exhaust. But then of course the Italians here with the F12 Ferrari. This one's 770 horsepower out of the V12. But next, let's go to Germany. Now we're in hypercar territory with this acid green Porsche 918 Spider. The V8 in the back and a battery rocket this thing to 60 in a little over two seconds. But there is one more country to visit. Let's end our travels in France with this 2018 Bugatti Chiron. It's beautiful exposed carbon fiber bodywork is hiding a quad turbo 16 cylinder engine that gives a top speed of over 260 miles per hour. I don't know, I think I'd choose this, but the selection here in the salon is just unreal.
They are all definitely supercars, and they will all appear on Super Saturday here at Barrett Jackson, and we'll all have a super time. So plan to tune in for 10 hours of coverage on Saturday. You know, after that, everything else here seems pretty mundane, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's the nice thing about having all, saving all the best for last. Keeps us all on our toes. Here's a 2018 Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG. Well, the G-Wagon was always the super SUV of Mercedes and until recently was not available in the United States. You had to import them yourself via the gray market. Mercedes finally realized there's a huge market for these. I mean, they're all over every street in Beverly Hills. You know, they never go off road, but then again, yeah, then again. <laughs> well, it was originally envisioned as a military vehicle. That's what it was originally designed to do. And then some royalty in the Middle East said, you know, I'd really love to have one of those. And Mercedes went, hey, if he wants it, then why don't we build it for somebody else? I mean, you think about it. This thing is quite a beast. 563 horsepower. Not about going fast in a straight line. It's just about, well, saying you have 563 horsepower. Now, this is the AMG version. Note, after the G, there's only two numbers. Uh, that's because it's the uh, AMG Super Bi-Turbo V8, twin turbocharged. And the paint is Designio Platinum Magno, which means it's a semi-gloss or a matte finish. And you have a diamond stitch Designio Napa black leather interior. Luxury, performance, 563 horsepower, wow. And the last number is 80, as in $80,000. And I'm just blown away by that gentleman's shirt. Well, there you go. Let's talk about a car that's going to be coming up. A 1967 Lincoln Continental Convertible. You want to talk about parade floats, boulevard cruisers, historic cars? This is one. Ah, uh, to sit by a semi-roaring fire with a beverage on a beautiful night in Scottsdale, Arizona. Staging lanes in the background. And behind that, the big top. The main auction room here, Barrett Jackson, Westworld of Scottsdale. And now on stage is lot 830, a 1970 Chevelle Custom Coupe. Well, many people consider 1970 to be the high water mark, both in styling and terms of performance. This is a big block, although they don't make claims that this was an original big block. Made it up to a Muncie four-speed. This is the original color, though, that cranberry red. Interesting to think that, you know, the Chevelle didn't even come around until 1964. And just seven years later, in 1977, that line came to an end. I've always kind of been intrigued, though, that they've never brought the Chevelle name back to a major model line that they could continue to run with. Because there's still people who, to this day, love the concept of the Chevelle. And of course, the styling changes were subtle between 1969 and 1970, but important. You know, went to the, uh, you had the dual headlights, which go away the next year. But the significant thing in 1970 was this color bar that went across. And the fact that in 1969, it angled right here, kind of like it was leaning forward, leaning into the speed. Now it's got a blockier front, but that's part of what the great appeal for it was. You put a 454 cubic inch big block, you got a big beefy looking front end. Those two things just seem to go together. Solid money, we're up in six figures right now. And that's where it stays at $106,000. Another big number. Now we're into our last of six hours here on FYI on Thursday night. We all start looking ahead to tomorrow. Fast Friday at Barrett Jackson. Here's company chairman Craig Jackson and a guest with a very special car you'll see. We have a very special car, a 1970 Cougar Eliminator with the legendary 428 Super Cobra Jet engine in this beautiful coupe. I'm joined here by Jason Billups, our resident Ford expert who knows an awful lot about this particular car. 
This is a very, very special car. I'm really excited to see this car. I never thought I'd see this car offered to the public. This car is one of three black 70 Eliminators built, and uh, it's actually one of two with a Super Cobra Jet engine. It's just a really, really highly loaded, highly optioned car. And being black, there was only three Eliminators ever built that were black. And uh, this is the only one that was delivered to the Eastern uh, United States. It received a complete rotisserie restoration. I just love the look of these cars. Yeah, it's a sinister looking car and it runs. It runs very well. Very special car indeed, and you'll see it during our coverage tomorrow, starting on the History Channel at 3 p.m. Eastern, going to 6 p.m., and then FYI picks up again at 6 p.m. and goes to midnight. So don't miss a minute. Fast Friday at Barrett-Jackson. $66,000, the hammer price on that 1970 Dodge. Charger in orange. Maybe a father-son combination. Bonding is a wonderful thing. What have we got now? Center stage, 1968 Chevy Chevelle custom convertible. Well, a little freelancing going on here. Instead of the black grill, they've taken all of the grill mesh and uh, or hardware cloth, whichever, and painted it silver. It's badged an SS 396, but I, I'm looking at a small block Chevy engine uh, here, I believe. So, yeah, that's a small block. So there's a lot of freelancing going on. Uh, Three-speed automatic, pearl white, super sports striping uh, shifting here and someone built a custom taste, their taste. Yeah, but I tell you what, I'm looking at this, the striping's pretty nice, and it's got this cool metal flake, kind of changes color depending on where you're looking at it. A moment ago, we were talking about the way the 1970 had the straight up and down lines. This is the 68 and 69, and you can see how it's kind of leaning forward, leaning into the speed. So that's how a styling changed between 68, 69, and 70. They've upgraded this with uh, aftermarket suspension and the 12 bolt rear end much stronger than the 10 bolt that was usually in these cars. So a bit of a custom here, but kind of like really nice driver quality. When talk about the styling change, of course there was a massive styling change between 1967 and 68, because this now has more of the Coke bottle style. $40,000 takes it away from someone who had that same taste. Don't forget, you can go to barrett-jackson.com, find out what every car in the auction did, what kind of goodies you're going to see tomorrow on Fast Friday, and then on Super Saturday, television hours, lots of interesting information. Barrett-jackson.com. Now, 1966 Lincoln Continental Custom Limousine. Yeah, full stretch here. Looks like about a 30-inch stretch uh, to the wheelbase between the back of the front door and the front of the rear door. I didn't check the seating capacity, uh, but I can see container and glasses, so drinks for six at least. And this one all customized, 462 cubic inch engine, three-speed automatic. 159 of these limos were built by Lehman Peterson of Chicago. And this is the Elwood Angle style, the era that came out in 1961 with the kind of flat side and less adorned than the, what they had done before in 1959 and 1960. And just a moment ago, a whole bunch of big guys came pulling out of the back when they got up out of the block. So there's plenty of room for plenty of people. And I just saw the rear suspension. It's got an air ride just jacked up. No sunroof, a real small rear window, an imitation of a Carson top, a padded vinyl top on the roof of this triple black Lincoln. This body style would continue on for a few more years, but it also got a little blingier. You know, they, they did a little more chrome work on the side. They had also some issues with the how they were going to present the side markers. I think the 66 is probably the purest in terms of the as they move forward and advance the styling, but didn't go too far. And it sells for 72,000. And all of these folks can fit in there and drive back to the hotel. And 
they better have a professional driver. Anyway, let's go to Tyler. I'm with Lot 841, a 1971 Chevrolet K10 custom pickup truck. And with a blueprint ninja cam, let's take a look under the hood. Tried and true Chevy 350 here, hand built by Blueprint Engines in Nebraska. They dyno tuned this, they dyno tuned this one and then sent it out and put it in this beautifully restored and customized Chevy pickup truck. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, this must be Hugger Orange, and it's not. It's actually Lava Orange from Porsche. They chose a little bit of a different tint from the Germans. Well, even though it looks very close to a stock Chevy color. They did that spray and bed liner in the back to match. Beautiful houndstooth interior. And you can see it's been jacked up quite a bit, several inches and 35 inch mudding tires. Looks fantastic. Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, remarkable little sports roadster. Up in the block right now, we've got a 1962 Ford Thunderbird sports roadster, apparently one of the less than 1,500 original sports roadsters built. Note the T-Bird emblem here with the T-Bird's wings and that metallic teal. That was used regardless of the color of the car. That was Thunderbird's signature color. And yes, the sports roadster underneath this fiberglass hard tonneau cover are the back seats. So this is easily removed with a couple of turn screws if you have to haul the kids in the back. Otherwise, you got a two seat bird. Well, we call these the bullet birds and you look at the, the uh, rear tail lights, you know exactly why they were still, you know, this was the look that had sort of come out at the with the mid 50s Fords and they were continuing on in the early 60s. Do remember everything was all about aircraft and rocket engines. 49,000 takes that bullet bird away. Very cool car. And here's a car that Tyler pointed out earlier. 1972 Chevelle Custom Coupe. Yeah, a lot of customization here. The grill and the uh, headlight bezels, turn signal surrounds have all been done in black. SS emblem in red. And uh, I don't believe I've seen them from the factory with red stripes such as this. This has a 632 cubic inch big block with a Holley Sniper electronic fuel injection system. 12 volt rear end with 373 gears. Basket handle shifter to run the three speed automatic transmission. The stripes are all painted on as we go to the back. Run your finger across them. There is no separation. You can't feel the paint. So they've done a lot of clear coat over that to make sure that it feels just right. So those aren't vinyl stripes. Those are nicely painted stripes. And the red stripes are uh, picked up by the red line tires. Pick up that same theme. Those are available aftermarket. All right, check what you get in the back seat of this. You like the car so much, you want to hang a picture of it in your house, maybe in your den, your office. That comes with the car. You don't see from the factory a black vinyl top on a black two-door hardtop. But you know, on this car, it just looks kind of right. A lot of triple black. We've got black on the interior, black, raven black outside with that lipstick red stripe. And of course, the black vinyl roof, which uh, once again, for those of you who you know, were born in the last 25 years, we can explain to you what it was all about. It was about looking and pretending in the beginning like you were a convertible. However, it kind of went beyond that. $70,000. You're right, Rick. It was more about promoting luxury. Now the next car on the block is the one Rick included in his feature on future collectible cars. That's a 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Well, yeah, the Dark Horse, a performance version, and it's not a massive upgrade over the basic Ford GT, but it's enough. So the basic Ford GT would have about 480 horsepower. Get the Dark Horse Edition, you're bumping up to 500 horsepower. 
They could have called it a Mach 1. They could have called it a Boss uh, or used any of the historic Ford Mustang performance names. But they, the Mustang now appeals to a younger group of buyers, and Ford Marketing wanted them to have a car of their own, not one that harkened back to memories of fellows like Rick, Bob, and me. So the dark horse is the performance Mustang of today. None taken. And of course, you know, you look at some of the other names going on, you know, Hellcats, Demons, those types of things. And, the, you know, dark is a theme that plays well in movies, TVs, comic books. So having a dark horse with that dark horse trim package, well, that plays well in cars as well. Yeah! Recaro seats 14 miles on this one. New in the wrapper, Brembo brakes. 10-speed automatic behind the 5-liter V8, 355 torque-sensing rear axle. And we are going to see another dark horse cross the block here at Barrett-Jackson, selling for charity, and that one is VIN 001, the very first dark horse to come off the line. So that's going to be selling for a great cause here at Barrett-Jackson. 72,000 takes that Mustang dark horse, fresh in the wrappers, Mike said, onto its new home. Another break coming up as we continue in our final hour on this Thursday night at the world's greatest collector car auction, Barrett Jackson. Stay with us. There's where the cars enter, the portals that take them to the Barrett Jackson auction block here at Westworld of Scottsdale, from which they all go on to new homes and new owners because Barrett-Jackson is an all-no-reserve auction. Or in auction parlance, a 100% sell-through. Every car finds a new home, because there are no reserve bids. Right now, this is a 1965 Everett Morrison Gen 4 Roadster. Well, it has the look of a Cobra. Even has a Carroll Shelby signature on one of the sun visors but this is a fiberglass copy and built to spec. Now, the British auto industry, remember the Cobra was an AC. They used a lot of parts crib from everybody else, and that's one of them. Yes, that license plate lamp is on every Bug Eye Sprite and every MGA and a lot of MG midgets and other British cars. It is not bespoke to the Cobra whatsoever. It's interesting, I think this body design, the general body design, the, the ace that it was based off of, actually goes back to the early 1950s, I think 1951. And yet here we are, decades and decades later, you know, once it got into the Shelby hands and we're still recreating them because it's such a great and beautiful design. I do like the Nardi aluminum and wood rimmed wheel. Boy, that's a, that's a piece of art even by itself. $65,000 takes it. The Shelby Cobra said to be the most copied car in history. Most of them licensed, but not all. Now here comes a car we previewed going to break a little while earlier. Lot 835.1 is a 1967 Lincoln Continental Convertible. And this one has been quite highly modified. Check out these wheels. Now, we saw those before on a pickup truck, those big steel hoop wheels. And under hood is the 462 cubic inch, 340 horsepower V8. And two great styling touches. One are the suicide rear doors, is what they're called. Uh, they are hinged at the back, not the front. And the other is the flat convertible top boot. The whole top stack is under there. Nothing to spoil these lines, Rick. Right? A little automotive archaeology. Check this out. This is the build sheet that was somehow rescued from the car. And I get a kick out of this because, yeah, they've still got it, but just try to read it. I mean, it's very hard to figure that out. I'm sure some, once again, some automotive archaeologists will try to figure it out. But that tells you exactly what it was born with, what the specific options were when it came away from the factory. Now, just a few minutes ago, we saw that uh, Continental limousine roll across. Got all that attention. And now this is the four-door version, the Continental. 
Not a massive number of these sold back in 1967. And like I say, I love the purity of this design, the Elwood angle design. You know, this really came out at a time when Cadillac was very blingy and Ford and Lincoln Mercury went in a different direction. Now, honest to goodness, I would not have predicted that. $130,000. Cheers, happy owner. Now, if you'd like to try and sharpen your bidding skills and maybe pick up a great prize in the process, you're going to want to play Fantasy Bid, brought to you by Dodge. Right now, our April is going to preview one of the cars that you'll be predicting the hammer price on. Thanks, Bob. I'm with this 1969 Z28 Camaro. Now, this is an authentic black Camaro. They didn't make a lot of them in black. Actually, only 0.6% of sales because black is so hard to keep flawless. And, well, this one, as you can see, is absolutely flawless. Now, it has its matching numbers. Scream in 302 V8 M22 Rock Crusher 4-speed manual. Has all its original sheet metal and glass. And, of course, inside, go Go ahead, go back inside because it just looks pristine. Wait a minute, here we go, we're, we're looping around. There we go, the bucket seat covers are all original and it's got that cool three spoke wheel and the six grand red line tack, no center console. I mean, this is all business in here. This is one sweet Camaro, Bob. Sweet car it is. Thanks, April. That 69 Camaro Z28 will cross the block on Saturday, so register to play now. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 18 or over to play. Visit promo.barrettjacksonfantasybid.com for the official rules. And who knows, you could walk away with a grand prize, a 2024 Dodge Hornet. Good luck. On the block, a 1996 Dodge Viper GTS is at 90 grand and counting. I think this is the best of the Viper designs. Roll up windows, coupe body style, double bubble roof, big spoiler on the back. They raced him at Le Mans. Cool. A little while ago in a commercial break, we had a you know Cobra Daytona coupe replica roll across. Those two cars look alike. Yep, 90 grand. In fact, one of our old colleagues back in the day, Justin Bell, drove a Viper at Le Mans. And I believe they won their class. We'll be back. Back here in Scottsdale with the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. You know, we love to do a feature we call Side by Side, comparing, you know, two cars that are similar. Well, Bob Barcha found two cars that share the same name but are generations apart. When it comes to sports cars, we all like to think that perhaps the most recognizable brand in the world is Ferrari, and that's fine. But when it comes to luxury, nobody competes with this little lady, the spirit of ecstasy that is representative of the Rolls Royce. This is a 1954 Silver Wraith drop head, a convertible. And as you can see, the bodywork harkens back to the pre-war years of sweeping fenders and front-mounted spares. A dual cowl, this pops up and you can open up a second windshield so the folks in back are protected. It's an absolutely beautiful car and I should note, this pattern looks like wicker, it isn't. It's hand painted on the car by a very good artist. Now this isn't the only rolls we have. In fact, another one that caught my eye is down at the other end of the building, 60 years later. And here it is, a 2014 Rolls-Royce Wraith. Doesn't look much different, does it? I'm kidding, of course it does. But there are some commonalities. Suicide doors, only two on this hardtop as opposed to four on the other car. But even though the roof doesn't go down, you still can get the effect of driving in clear air with a special feature called twinkling starlight in the roof. That is so cool. But I suppose the biggest differences are right up front. The 1954 version is a six cylinder engine, three liters in displacement. This baby under the bonnet, as the Brits say, 6.6 .6 liter, 12 cylinder, cranking out 625 horsepower, which you're going to need because this baby weighs almost three tons. And it also cost over half a million dollars. So you could put the 1954 and 2014 Rolls Royces next to each other and you'd see a lot of differences. But one thing remains the same, and that is the cachet that is only Rolls Royce. 
Both of those cars selling here at Barrett Jackson. The newer one coming across the block tomorrow. The vintage one coming across the block on Saturday, which is part of the Don Williams collection. Enough of the block right now. How about a 2022 Mustang GT Custom? Boy, what a wide body. Almost looks like a rocket bunny kit uh, that has been added to this one. RTR Vehicles did this. Uh, they call it a Spec 5 upgrade. Uh, LED lights in the grill, chin spoiler, bumper inserts, hood extractor vents, quarter splitters, tactical performance, lowering springs, and suspension. So I recognize the roof and the greenhouse and the window lines and the doors, Rick, not much else as being pure Mustang. Well, RTR stands for Ready to Rock, and it's the company that was created by famous drifter Vaughn Gittin Jr. So this is his company and his idea. Well, if we're going to do it big, how do we do it? And I love the way they put those fender flares out with the tires exposed in the back. It's all about performance with this wild 2022 Mustang Custom. You have not only the regular Mustang wing, but the wing has a spoiler on the back. Not just a gurney lift, but there's a good two inches there. Raise that up. And it's got a GT350 brake kit on it as well, which is great. So it not only has that extra power, that extra speed, it's got the extra style, it's got extra braking ability as well. And no attempt to take these fender flares and blend them in. Uh, the exposed Allen head screws right there to add those flares on both front and rear looking very purposeful. And you got to have nerves of steel when you drill that first hole thinking yeah I'm going to put this in exactly the right place. You know once again we're not talking doing it on you know, a Lamborghini or something but still you want to do it right. Nope, didn't want 53,000, so 52,000 takes the car. Now let's rejoin Tyler. Well, there were a few mid-engine Corvette concepts over the years before the current generation, the eighth generation Corvette, with the engine going in the back. But here is a crazy what if. They did a mid-engine Corvette in 1963. You look at the nose, it's way too short to fit a V8 in there. Actually, it's just cooling, a radiator, much like a modern supercar. And then here's a crazy thing right here. They call these suicide doors. Slide out backwards with the hinge right here to go inside in what looks like a racing cockpit with paddle shifters. If you think that's crazy, well, look behind it. The engine bay, you have an LS-based engine, but it has twin turbos on it, putting out over 1,000 horsepower to the wheels. So not only is it a mid-engine Corvette, but a incredibly powerful one. And why is it a 1963? Well, look, they even integrated a split window setup there with the venting. I have never seen anything like this before. That is one amazing construction. Thank you, Tyler. Now on the block, we're at 49 grand on a 2005 Ferrari 612 Scaligetti F1. Just a beautiful 2 plus 2 Ferrari. Hard to believe this is closing in on being 20 years old. Black leather interior with silver stitching, gleaming Nurburgring silver paint. V12, of course, and the F1 six speed gearbox, 31,000 miles. $54,000 takes it to its new home. Another break coming up as we are now in our final half hour here on Thursday at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Stay with us. Barrett Jackson under the big top now on the block a 1970 Chevelle custom a 
I'll tell you what, I love the build on this. Looking underneath the hood, they've already closed it with the way they've shaved everything, lined it up. Go to the front of this car when we get a chance and look at the work that they've done in blending in the bumper, painting it body style. This is just beautifully, beautifully done. I love the special grill, the little spoiler at the bottom, and in the back, the same treatment again. The bumper's been painted body color. It's just a beautiful, beautiful build. Normally, normally this bumper would stick out to about here, but NASCAR style has been fared right in even with the body. Hats off to Nostalgia Hot Rods of Nevada for this beautiful build and this six-figure champagne paint job. Mercedes Silver is what they say the name of the color is, but like I say, I'm with you, it's more like a champagne. And I gotta tell you, $68,000, we're nowhere near what this car deserves, especially if you could look under that hood again. $68,000 takes it away, and that gentleman has been busy. He's bought several cars over the last two days. Now, we talk about automobilia, which is everything to do with the automobile except the car itself. And in this morning's auction, this all-original Ronald McDonald drive-in statue, very collectible, and it went for $10,000. How about a rare 1951 Gulf Oil dual-sided service station gas pump with station lighter, 15,000 at the hammer. And this 1950s Texaco Oil double-sided porcelain service station sign on its original pole, a nice example and a nice sale, $35,000. Serious business. And now we go back to the stage for 1971 Chevy K10 custom pickup. Yeah, second of the last year for this body style. And this one nicely done. It's got a nice little uh, blueprint engine. Turbo 350 under the hood, a 205 transfer case. It's got a big six inch lift. It's got 36 inch tires on those 15 inch rims. It's a great build. Cheyenne, which was the top of the line trim at this time for Chevy pickups, later supplanted by the Silverado. Uh, I, I love these GM two-tones, whether it's the secondary color is down the center or whether it's on the lower body side like this one. Very, very sharp. And this is the color that uh, Tyler Hoover pointed out is not hugger orange. It's Porsche lava. Well, whatever it is, the truck sells for $73,000. And the party is raging in several corners of this massive arena. So let's go to April. Hey, Bob, I'm in first generation Bronco heaven. I didn't know it existed, but it does here at Parrot Jackson. Now, take a look at this going across the block tomorrow, 1972 Bronco. And I love this metallic red paint. It's a little warmer than this Ford red right here, but it just looks so, so beautiful. Now, this one's got a 5.0 liter Coyote V8 six-speed automatic transmission and take a peek inside because it has these really sweet black and tan seats that are just never born like that but it looks really really cool it has all the goodies you could ever want bluetooth digital gauges leather wrapped wheel full roll cage i mean soon it's going to be impossible to find an original bronco because they've all been built out like this one and hey i'm not mad about it <laughs> None of us are, April, thanks. You'll be seeing that car on tomorrow's menu, and Friday will be a very tasty day indeed. Now on stage, a 1961 Corvette 283 230 convertible. All right, you know I'm a sucker for period speed equipment. Go ahead, Rick. When this thing runs to all, I'll show you something pretty trick. All right, well, 61, obviously, at this point, we've got the Stingray back going in. Big change also was up front. Instead of those big, heavy teeth like they used to have in the years before, now they've gone to a much more subtle grill. All right, let's look under the hood. These valve cover breathers, that's the stock valve cover, but look at the indication here. Dean Moon Speed Equipment Company. The Moon Eyes, that's a moon-equipped breather. Now, that, to me, is very cool and very period. Nice to see it on this car. And that sold sticker will say $72,000. A very cool car indeed. Moving on, here's a 1972 Ford F100 custom pickup. Well, look at the LED headlights and look at that bright chrome grill just for starters. 
Very sharp, modern base coat, clear coat paint. Much bigger wheels and tires than it was born with. 429, 450 horse engine, C6 automatic, nine inch rear end with 373 gears. Back then you had your choice of the uh, the base, the custom, or the Ranger. I don't know what this one started off life as, but it doesn't really matter because it's beautiful today. It changed so much having to do with it. We've got uh, disc brakes down below. Look inside the cab. The seat's been treated to a nice redo. And once again, I always think back to the life this had probably when it was first born. You know, trucks back in 1972 were purely utilitarian. These days, people buy them simply as commuter vehicles, but not so much back then. And see this character line right there? That gave this body style the name, the bump side. And uh, every seems every Ford pickup body has a different name as they went through the generations. All right, look at one interesting thing that they've done back here as we come along to the back of the bed. We've got the gas cap that's been moved right here to fill up the big tank they've put in down below. 34,000 takes it. That's a good price on that truck. That's the name of the game here at Barrett Jackson. Getting into our final 10 or 12 minutes. We have a few more cars to go before we bid you good night. Let you rest up for tomorrow, Fast Friday. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson in the closing moments of our FYI live coverage of the world's greatest collector car auction on this Thursday in Scottsdale, Arizona. Here's a look at the massive tents housing thousands of cars in this year's record-breaking auction. And we go to the block for a 1963 Corvette Custom Split Window Coupe. This is one Tyler showed us earlier. Yeah, we've seen some pretty wild customs roll across the block over the course of the last few days, but this is pretty close to the top. I mean, they call it a 1963 split window, but in reality, it's just a little tribute to that because they've got this mid-engine. Boy, they've changed every aspect of this car. Nicely done. Good luck maintaining it. Speaking as a guy who doesn't use tools. Time to have a look at our top sellers, and it's a kind of an interesting situation. We have a three-way tie for second place. Among them, this 1956 Chevy Bel Air Custom. Beautiful in white, and candy apple red, and it tipped the scales at $200,000. Also at that number, this 2023 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon 170. Incredibly powerful, the deep wine gray. Also at 200,000, this 1967 Chevrolet Corvette. One of everybody's favorite years, and topping them all, this 2023 Corvette Z06 3LZ which sold for $220,000, every nickel of it going to charity. Great car, great cause, and a great tradition here at Barrett-Jackson. Now, here is a 2004 Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet. Yeah, the 996 version, the first of the liquid-cooled Porsche 911s. This one with 49,000 miles and a six-speed transmission. Yeah, this was the return of the Turbo Cabriolet. The last time they built it was 1989. 15 years had gone by. It was time to build a new one. Solid horsepower, though. 415 horse. 0 to 60, 4.2 seconds. I like those center lock BBS wheels from the aftermarket. Much lighter than what the factory would have put on there. Great long distance touring car, these are. You know, at the back of the car, you know, in, back in the 50s and 60s, we always had the art of the exhaust. Cool exhaust, but they've still got, the, I love the way they've cut these into the body right here. 58,000, as it says on the sold sticker. And that Porsche goes to a new home Why we go to Tyler. Well, here's another beautiful British car selling tomorrow here at Barrett Jackson. We're in the South Pavilion and this 2019 Aston Martin DB11 just looks fantastic. Under the hood, a twin turbo V12, 630 horsepower, the zero to 60. 3.7 seconds and this one has all the carbon fiber including a full carbon fiber roof 
Look up there, it's not black, it is bare carbon fiber, giving it a bit of a two-tone. Then you go inside, and it has this Aston Martin racing color motif going on in there, and the seat inserts and the stitching, which matches the brake calipers. Now, the DB11 has just gone out of production. We now have the DB12 just coming out. So we'll see what happens now that this is the previous generation. Of course, Bond, Sean Connery drove the DB5. Somebody strangled that singer. We've still got cars to sell. Here's a 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo, 67,000 and counting. Yeah, this one's had some updates. It has aftermarket forged alloy wheels in a larger size than were new, wrapped in uh, Toyo Proxa Sport tires. Yellow calipers there, black leather interior in nice shape, five liter V10, but wow, 46,000 miles. Someone's enjoyed this one a lot. It's about time. Too many times we see these, they don't have enough miles. You know, you think about the Gallardo, it was really designed to go up against the Ferrari 360. They were selling a lot of them. Lamborghini wanted to do the same thing, and they did with this. They sold 14,000 of these. $71,000 buys this one. After a little confusion there between a bitter assistant and his bitter. Want to remind you, tomorrow, History Channel from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern, and then FYI from 6 p.m. to midnight Eastern time. Now we move on to lot 845 and 1955 Chevy Bel Air Custom. Boy, beautiful car. Gleaming new paint. Look at all the great chrome and stainless. Uh, aluminum radiator, small block, a traditional small block Chevy, uh, four barrel on an Edelbrock dual plane manifold. Just very, very cool. River City Speed and Customs in Idaho did this one in Gypsy Red and Shoreline Beige. All right, and something that's hidden in plain view, look at that right there. We've got, it must be Thor, I'm not quite sure who, the Zeus perhaps, hanging out on the inside of the, oh. uh, of the hood. I love that thing right there. That's sneaky. <laughs> What's great about it is you'd never know it from the outside that there was something wild underneath the hood. Beautiful two-door hardtop body style. Uh, very, very original looking interior, but for the modern analog gauges. This looks a lot more like Summit White than Shoreline Beige, uh, which was kind of an off-white that Chevy used in 1955. Yeah, according to the consigner, it's Gypsy Red and Shoreline Beige. So there you go. $40,000 takes it. Another good buy. I think that gentleman knows it. Okay, now rolling up. Our last car of the evening, I suspect. A 1985 Chevy Blazer Custom. Well, so much work has been done to this. Yeah, they started with an original 1985 Blazer, then they stripped it all down. They got a 5.7 liter crate engine, automatic transmission, sniper fuel injection, all kinds of work that's been done, including a four inch lift. Well, we're out of time, but don't forget, the answers are all at barrett-jackson.com. That'll do it for us today from Scottsdale, but we have a huge Friday coming up. We'll kick things off with three hours on the History Channel at 3 p.m. Eastern, and then we switch over to FYI for another six hours of auction action. As I mentioned, it's a car lover's nirvana. But for now, for Mike Joy, Rick DeBruel, Tyler Hoover, and April Rose, I'm Bob Barsha. Thanks so much for riding along with us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Rest up. It's going to be a big day.